Hey, everyone, welcome to a brand new MMA Rose Kid podcast. It's going to be a great show today. I got the Greg Wilson here. Hey, man. One of the funniest people I know, as well as Joe the Kid Perez. What's up, dude? I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, people, marijuana is legal in California, and you shouldn't have to leave your house to get it. And now you don't, thanks to Speedweed.com. They have everything from edibles to marijuana to vape pens to uh, CBD oil to THC sex lube, okay, which I can't use because my wife's breastfeeding right now, and we don't want the kid getting high. That's true, All right, you know. But I'll give it to you, Greg, okay, because your dick needs to get all high. And, uh, and then it does butt- once it sees my face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I like it. Uh, so listen, go to Speedweed.com. Follow them at Speedweed, at Speedweed. But I have used the sex lube before, and man, I didn't think that sex could get more enjoyable, and it does, all right? Speedweed.com, mention Roasted. You get $10 off, $100 or more. They have everything, and they're great people, okay? And check them out. I love that it's Speedweed. Like, weed's their main thing, but somehow we're really pushing this lube, man. (laughs) We're like, listen, we know you can get weed anywhere, but what about that weed lube? Yeah, that's You know, I mean, no, listen, they also have great weed, you know? If I can order the weed, by the way. Yes, order order the weed. It seems like weed has become about so many other things except (laughs) weed. Am I the only person still just smoking weed? Yeah, now it's weed gum. And, and, and vapes and, and yes and all it rubs and bombs and you know you can get all, it all at speedweed.com though uh, yeah, of so, course so uh, including actually weed so what, what, what's been going on so my wife uh, was sick the other day so that's why we're doing a podcast later She's, she has this thing with breastfeeding where it's normal for ladies to get this thing where they breastfeed and something happened where she had like 103 uh, temperature that's because so. the baby is sucking the life uh, out may- of their bodies. Maybe the ba- it's just it's just crazy though because the baby looks at me like I'm the cock blocker of her food. You know, like <laughs> she's like, why is he taking him away away from where I want to be? You right. know? Um, but uh, but that was cool. We went to we did a bunch of things. It's hard. To, we went to um, a lactation consultant to make sure the baby's getting enough thing, and we're, we're there. And it's hard for me not to make jokes. You know, like the like the, the lady's like, yeah, you know, it looks like she's sucking and swallowing well. I'm like, yeah, just like her mom. You know, and just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. Of course. Um, I feel like you said it. No, no. What I did say was, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if the baby's getting enough food. And then the lady's like, why? I'm like, well, I look at her and she has a menu in her hand. And, and, uh, <laughs> and so I was making jokes like that. And like, she has a fork and a bib. Is that normal for her to be ordering pizza at like four weeks old? So I did say shit like that. There's but, that speed weed. But everything, everything is good. Yeah, the baby's on speed weed. So that's good. And then um, I was actually listening on the way back from... Uh, the thing, uh, Def Leppard came on. I was oh, yeah. And They're coming to concert next Saturday. Are you going? Yeah. Really? I want Because it's with Journey. And I'm like, fuck that's, that's, yeah. that's, cool. that's a fucking Filipino dude that like. I know, but he sounds contact. just like him. That, that's oh, not, listen, it beats all those decades when they were just trying to have somebody else be the lead singer. At least this sounds like fucking Journey. I know. You know? I don't know. That's not Journey, though. But it is Journey. Even the other guy, even at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Steve Perry was like, thank you. Little Filipino guy for fucking doing this for he did really yes he thank he was like whatever the guy's name is I forgot uh, uh, but he was like thank you for doing this because he was like because I'm never coming back I'm never singing these songs again because it hurts my throat and uh, so he he really appreciated was it a one whole it. quack Arnell, I was think it one whole quack is that one whole quack one, one whole quack is a, in fact the lead singer now. And the guy's a star. I'm uh, telling you, he sounds we just have like him on him. the phone now. Uh, one whole cock. Uh, how do you like being the lead singer of Journey? It is a great uh, new extension of my journey. First, I was a major fighter. Now, I'm a major singer performing the arena for tens of thousands of American pussy. Did you ever think this would happen? I never in my wildest dream. Oh, well, I was doing karaoke. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. That's right. I was uh, doing a karaoke. And you put it on YouTube? I put on. I didn't even put on YouTube. It was uh, someone else. They... <laughs> And now you're the lead singer. And now I'm a lead singer of like the journey. Or, or journey. Talk about the crazy journey. Yes. Yeah, so well, thank, well, thank you. Uh, so anyway, so I was at a concert at the Alice Cooper concert one time, and okay. the guy next to me had one arm. It was the 
drummer from De- from Def Leppard. There you go. Uh, and I remember the guy in Alice was doing uh, the drummer was doing a drum solo. So I go to him and I'm like, uh, "Who's better, you or him?" And he goes, "He is. He's got two fucking arms." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's the greatest Dude, thing think about that guy, man. Like, they're at the top of their game. Biggest rock album in the world. And they're just young and wild and got money. And then and he's a drummer. Ugh. And he like, gets in a car accident and loses his arm. But he's still the drummer. He's still the drummer. Well, they built... Luckily, he was playing for a band that was so rich, they could invent a drum kit that had pedals for a one-armed drummer. Yeah. Do you realize how many guys got in car accidents that just played in shitty bands <laughs> that just never got to play again? They're just fucking working construction with mangled fingers. Like, yeah, I used to be in this band called Stro- Stop, Drop, and Rock. And, uh, you know, but we I hurt my hand in this car. No, I don't. You know, like, they didn't get to play for the multi-billion dollar band that could invent a drum kit for you. So true. So, you know, that guy is, listen, talk about double charmed life. So how are you doing? What's going on with you? Eh, good. Everything's good. Have fun. Yeah? Yeah, the workshops are great. They're all sold out. In fact, I, I forgot some people had enrolled in it, so now I have, like, more than I expected. It's a good problem to and, have. Uh, right, it's a good problem to have, but I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're going to be running long tonight. So, all right. So those are going great, and uh, you know, shows were a lot of fun last week. Uh, it's so funny because I was back at the Ha Ha for the Late Show, and like when they call it the Down and Dirty with Greg Wilson, it's got like forty or fifty people that show up to it. When they just have the Late Show, even though I'm on it, and it's just the Late Show, it gets like half that. Wow, wow. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So did you tell them that? Yeah. And did they agree? Well, of course. I mean, the numbers are the numbers. You can't yeah, dispute yeah. the numbers. Hmm. You know, it was just because their graphic design person was gone and they can't do it uh, themselves. And so they couldn't get the new, the other artwork done. So they had the old person do it on the old template. <laughs> and Joe, how are you? I'm going to have a question for you, dude. What's that? You ever tried your wife's breast milk yet? No. Or what does it taste like? I, well, the answer is no. Uh, I would assume it just probably would taste sweet and milk. Probably probably a lot more sweet. I'm with wondering. you, though, Joe. I got to say, I would have tried it by now. I know, me too. Just a little tasty taste. Uh, not a little drip, not one drop just on your fingertip. Just a little... I don't know. Maybe. Or even on accident, like you just, you know, you just... I don't know. You're doing it and you just actually, you know, like... No, I didn't. I didn't. I haven't. That's one of my top... Search words in Pornhub. Have you, ever t- have you ever tried your own semen? Is lactating mom? Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. You drank in your own semen? I wouldn't. I haven't drank it, but I've tried it before, just out of curiosity. <laughs> I think everybody's <laughs> tried it. Uh, I think you're exactly one of three people in this room that have tried to eat their own cum. Well, one in three men in America have tried their own semen. No, I would say one in three million men. <laughs> no, it's more like it's probably more like one in three thousand. I mean, how many gay guys are there per? <laughs> well, they're not drinking their own cum. I, I don't know. know. I would think they'd be more likely to taste it though. Like I figure that would be your first taste maybe that's how you become gay like you taste it and then you're like yeah and maybe that's how you stay with brain surgery girl because yeah. you're like hey at least i'm not gay but i taste my own cum i want to be gay well, why yeah. did you taste so just, your, wait why did you taste it's your like own you know if you, you, you jack how hungry off were you you jack off and you just you bust your nut and it goes all over the place you get some on your hand and it's like why even try to wash it off my hand or just lick it up and just taste it and see what all the, <laughs> that's so see disgusting. what all the fuss is about you dude. know uh kiss one time released a classic rock hair metal song called lick it up yeah and i don't think that was what they meant <laughs> i don't think they were like you know yeah, lick it up your own jizz yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is the but it doesn't taste bad at all, dude. So I like when I look at come girls on, who like dudes, gag. Dudes, you jizzed on your hand. When the gr- when little... girls gag when you come in their mouth, I think they're just—I don't know what it is. It doesn't taste like anything. It's just like salty, no big deal. About how many times have you have you done this? Just a, just a few times. I don't do it all the time. I haven't done it in years. A dude. few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So once wasn't enough. You were like, I got I just ate some broccoli. Let's see if it really affects the taste or some asparagus. Well, the first time I did it, I just felt like I didn't have enough cum on my on my tongue, pretty much, because I, I thought I wanted to like maybe I wasn't tasting it fully. So I thought I'd get a thicker load and taste that, but it's still the same. It's like Elmer's glue, but without like the consistency. So why of, like, did glue. you taste it the other nine times? And why do you know what Elmer's glue tastes like? Well, I think everybody knows. Well, everybody Elmer's knows glue. what Elmer's glue tastes like. Yeah. I, don't, I don't taste glue. Oh no, yeah. I'm thinking of Play-Doh. I know what Play-Doh tastes like. Yeah. All right, so, so you would recommend tasting your own cum? I think every guy now, should do it. Now, were you trying to suck your own dick at the time, or was that it I've just, tried to do? Yeah, I've tried. Everybody tried. I want to see if I can read. Yeah, everybody tries. I wish I could. All right, uh, go on. Could you so, really? Oh, it's that wrestling background. Yeah. yeah. 
He had to take a boner time out, mm-hmm. suck his own dick. Mm-hmm. All but right. even he didn't swallow his own cum, no, you fucking... Not. What's wrong with you, uh, you All right, so let's talk about the fights. Did you watch the fights in Brazil last week? I did watch the fights in Brazil last week. Uh, Eric Anders. I was pulling for Eric. Dude. That's my friend. I just think, man... Outclassed like a motherfucker. No. He did not have the skills to be in that ring. I, he, I don't think he had the cardio. I, I think that he did... You can't take a fight like that on such short notice against a guy that caliber. I think it was apparent that he spent most of his life playing football and not fighting. I know he's got a lot of natural ability, tremendous talent, but I thought fighting-wise, there was actual skill. He looked really outclassed. He was winning a lot of moments, landing a lot of punches. Yeah, a few moments. He would land some punches. That's what he had. He had big punches, but that was it. Uh, I don't know. I think at a full camp, he does much better. I, just I think- don't know. I thought he looked like he just didn't have the skills to pay the bills in that one. What did you think? I think... Uh- Tiago, Tiago Santos, he's really good. He's well rounded, but I don't think even he has all the skills to hang in like the top like five people in that weight division. But he did to beat Eric Anders. I yeah, thought it was very clear. Who, who was he going to fight before Adam? Who pulled out of that fight? I forgot. It was like a bunch of CB guys Gold, out. right? I think, I think it was, it was a bunch of guys pulled out. Like the whole, it was like Jimmy Manoa versus somebody. Was that it? Manoa yeah. versus it Santos. Was, it was like the two guys pulled. Like he was replacing someone else, and then uh-huh. Anders replacing them. If that wasn't his weight class. I just think Anders, I don't know if he lost because he was really hurt or just he was exhausted. I think it was a combination. He even said, I haven't been tired like that since, since my wedding night. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Uh, which, why are you that tired on your wedding night, too? I, I was not tired. I was kind of excited on my wedding night. But was well, yeah. it because he's staying up all night banging his wife? Probably. But I, I, I bang my wife once on my wedding night. I mean, yeah. I, I know that a lot of guys don't even fuck on their wedding night. They're just too, too like tired. I see that being my case. I expect to be too drunk and tired to actually screw on my wedding night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? I, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, I'm going to go nuts at the reception. So, I mean. And there might be some coke involved. They, uh, you know, probably not at the wedding. Nah, I think that would be one night I would skip the cocaine. But I probably will get pretty drunk. And, you know, Summer's, Summer's knows. <laughs> she's used to it by now. Right. She's like, we'll hit it in the morning. Where do you want to go for your honeymoon? Uh, we'll probably uh, want to go to Europe. Wow. Where'd you go, you know, Adam? She grew up in Germany. We didn't so. have one, really. We had like three little mini honeymoons because we were supposed to go to Mexico, but then when the, she got pregnant and they said she couldn't go because of... Uh, uh, Mexico. Because, uh, <laughs> no, because of... Um, what's it called? People were like with their heads shrink. Uh, oh, Zika. Zika, yeah. And I don't want our baby having like no head. And they're like, what happened? I'm like, well, we wanted to go to Senior Frogs. <laughs> and so, so that would have been a bad idea. Pretty also, much. A uh, little Nog beat Sam Alvey. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sam Alvey just like wins the fights. I think he's gonna lose and loses the fight. I think he's gonna win. Mm-hmm. That fight I think was stopped too sh- because Sam Alvey's such a fucking a chin of. I don't know the way he went down awkward on that leg, that knee. I, I don't know. It looked like that was the kind of awkwardness where it looks like they're they're out. Yeah. By the way, you know, I've been following kind of Bubba class. Jenkins. Was that yeah? So Bubba won his fight. Yeah. Nice. In, in, uh, in FC. Brave won? FC. Brave FC. He is celebrating a lot. Like he's now on a yacht. Yeah, he's taking his belt everywhere. Uh, so he's a champion? Well, yeah, he's a champion. Wow. Uh, but it's also, it was his first time ever in the organization. I was going to say, there, I was gonna say, right? Wasn't their first fight like the, for the championship? Yes. Like, like oh. it was their opening fight series, so everyone was a champion that night. They handed out like nine belts or something like but, that. But, but I, I'm happy for him, but he's a little kind of, like he's like hanging out, partying in Sheiks. He's on yachts. It's like he's... Uh, well, good for him. He's now you the, know what? He's, like, he's the most interesting man in the world. Let but I'm happy enjoy. for him, though. I yes. am super happy for Let him. Let him enjoy it. Good for you, Bubba. We yes. love you, buddy. We do love you. Good for you. Uh, Although he posted this one picture, and I don't know, I could mostly see Wiener. That's what I could see. <laughs> Let me go check it out. And I even said that on his Instagram. It was like him on like a desert mountain with the fucking belt. And I was just like, nice wiener. Because, I mean, you can really see his wiener really well. You got a hog on him. A perfect. What? I mean, you could tell that inflated, it's going to be a very large wiener. <laughs> Damn. Uh, also, Cowboy Oliveira. Was yeah. Right. How many cowboys are there of how many different denominations? There's, There's got to be at least a dozen cowboys. There's two cowboys. There's two. Just Cow- Cerrone, Cerrone and him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's more. No, there's two. We'll find out. But cowboy fights so often that you think... Maybe that's like, what it is. Yeah. He fights so many times. You're like, how many cowboys are there? By the Jesus. way, I'm worried about his fight against Mike Perry. Just because I heard him on the Rogan podcast, and he was talking about... You know, taking mushrooms and microdosing and expanding his mind and taking all kinds of like going to those like cool drug things. Like, it just seemed like he was he went off on Greg Jackson's camp and Winkle John. He's doing his own thing and I don't know. Fucking, I think a prime cowboy destroys any version of Mike Perry, but this version of cowboy, I'm not sure. I'll just say I'm going with platinum Mike Perry because isn't he coming off a loss? 
Cowboy? No, Perry. no, he beat no, Paul Perry Felder. Look great against oh, Felder. Okay. What's his name? And yeah. Cowboy's going. And it's not even really his weight class. And he's wants yeah, to become no, an I'm actor going with now. Mike Perry on yeah, that. me too. Uh, well, Cowboy just posted a picture of himself on Instagram with a giant cast on his arm. Oh, so maybe he's out of the fight. No, he said he's still fighting, but he had a big cast on his arm. <laughs> he get like, to wear the cast. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's his best shot against Mike Perry. He's having a forty-five pound cast on his arm. <laughs> and our boy Andre Ewell, who we had in the podcast, won. Yeah, happy for him. He beat Burrell. Uh, I mean, basically. Basically, it was kind of crazy because after the fight, he was like, man, people don't know this, but I was going to be homeless. And, uh, and and now UFC called me, which basically now the UFC is now, I guess, getting homeless people to fight Burrell and he's still losing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy for him. Brandon Marcos, man, she looked so good in the first and then just fell the fuck apart. Uh, still got to draw against Marina Rodriguez. But man, that was that was strange. Uh, and then uh, other other fights, Chase Sherman. Ugh. Talk about a guy, I mean, he either wins by knockout or loses by knockout, mm -hmm. but fuck. Um, and then Ben Saunders, that was shitty too. I liked Andre Ewell, man. I thought he was yeah, pretty good, man. That's what we just talked about. Yeah, I know. But yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, we were talking more about Brow than we were about Ewell. I thought he looked really good. I liked it. I like him too. And then Hector Lombard now lost for six straight ones. But uh, that kid's got power, man. Ewell, he's got power, and he uh, he took some punches too. I mean, they were like saying that he was kind of like set up to lose that one. And oh, he totally was. He like he he was like, not me, not today, motherfucker. Like it was impressive. I I, I liked you look him. Look at how far Baral. I mean, he was the champ for so long. Yeah. And ever when the UFC all of a sudden started testing harder, it seems like Baral just fell the fuck apart. Uh, talk about a guy who you know. I think was on stuff uh, just based on how he's winning versus how he's losing. Like, I don't know if he's ever tested positive or anything, but something's weird. Um, by the way, did you watch the press conference with Conor McGregor? Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about that. I thought that happened. Yeah. It's like the press conference just happened. That's like the only time they've come face to face. And now the fight is actually going to happen within like eight days, nine days. Yeah. This shit came up quick. What did you dude. think of the press conference? I mean, I have like the, the general thought that most people... I've seen have like where they thought Connor was like kind of he seemed like maybe you can relate to this Greg but he seemed like kind of coked up uh, and I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not saying that he does coke but like he, had, he came off like that super energetic vibe but the problem was I think that he, they just didn't have people in the stadium there wasn't any fans it was just like press people yeah there was like no like energy I'm to write so off happy of. that they had no fans because if they would have let Irish fans in that press conference it would have been like the biggest. Everyone would be like, "Oh man, Connor fucking destroyed Khabib. Mm -hmm. What a beatdown!" Yada yada. But because they didn't, you got to see how ridiculous some of the shit he says was. Yeah. And uh, and you're like, wow, he looked like a child mm -hmm. out there. And Khabib was not shook. Um, if anything, the guy who got it the most was Khabib's manager, who um, Connor called a terrorist because at one point he was might have been an informant or something for. Uh, Al Qaeda. Yeah, there's know, a lot of steam going around about that one, man. I was like, whoa, he stepped in it. Yeah. And that's the thing is, he's one of those guys, and you talk about seeming coked out. This is drunk on fame. Mm -hmm. This is when you're so high that you lose all connection with reality. You know, and you think that the rules, not just the rules of the universe, but just the laws of physics don't fucking apply to you. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes and attacks everybody, breaks the thing, gets glass in a guy's eye, and yet now he's headlining UFC. Like, when you get away with shit over and over and over again, you really begin to think that the, no one can touch you. And this is the kind of thing, pride comes before a fall. This is usually exactly the type of, of lead up to that kind of experience. I, so who do you think wins this fight? Now, I gotta say, right now, I'm going with Khabib. Man, I look. I want Khabib to win so much. I just worry that Connor's left hand is so fucking strong. Khabib, his, it, I, I think his mind his, isn't in the right place. I don't think he's. But his mind wasn't in the right place against Eddie Alvarez. Or man, against, it's different. Eddie Alvarez, really? We were picking Eddie Alvarez before that fight. But that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we were still picking now, him. Fuck, now you were picking him because he's your boy. So were you. I don't remember. <laughs> I was only picking him because I didn't want Connor to win because of CB Gold. I hated every time that he would win, and CB was like, and that is why I got another tattoo of him on my taint. <laughs> yeah, but and then, and then bringing up the whole Putin versus uh, the guy from Ch the, war the Chechnyan uh, dictator slash, I, I, don't, I don't even know what the hell politics is. I I'm not informed as far as that goes, but wow, it was it was it was deep. Yeah, I'm it telling was, you, he's. I I think he may be a little off his nut, and I maybe he may be primed to really get knocked the fuck out. He's not gonna get knocked out by Khabib. He might get like taken down and beaten up. Well, then and that'll submitted, happen. But I don't see you get... say that. But I don't think you could say that for sure. That might happen still. Yeah, who? He's never knocked out anybody. 
Doesn't mean he can't. Doesn't mean he can't. That, that's true. But he's, it's just, this is not what he usually does. Well, let's see. I can't wait for it. This I, is going to be a beautiful fight. I, uh, where are you going to watch it? I don't know. Uh, what's the address here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in Iowa. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I'm doing the funny bone. Oh, oh okay. no! <laughs> I'll, still be able to, I'll still be able to watch it oh, okay. somehow. Uh, last week, by the way, Pivin was crazy. It was in New York. He had like four sold out shows in Rochester, New York. That was, that was awesome. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Touring with him is, is fun. It's just, it's just, it's just. I hard. gotta tell you something about him as soon when we're off the air. It's just hard to go back to from like you like sold out shows to like dime and three people. Yeah. But that's when you get better though. People don't totally. realize. Listen, that's you gotta have gym. both. Exactly. That that's is the gym. That is. You know? Even though you don't want people to treat it that way, I mean, that is where you cut your teeth and you get the new material ready, and you know. Yeah, exactly. That's your camp. That that is my camp. So I'm, we're calling Curtis Millinder right now. Uh, is this is this on? It doesn't look like it. Uh, Kurt, here we go. Here we go. So Curtis won his last two fights, beat the guy that beat Mike Perry, uh, actually, uh, and looked great. He's won his last two fights. Who was that? Who was the guy that beat Mike Perry? That's what Max Griffin. Was that two fights ago? Is that what it was? That was uh, two fights ago for Mike Perry, yeah. That's what it was. So I was thinking about that. Yeah. So, I I mean, okay. So, uh, anyway. All right. Perfect. I'm calling him right now. We'll see if he picks (laughs) up. Yeah, exactly. You got to... You gotta always let them know. Hey, I'm, it's me calling. Yeah, yeah, I well, know. That's the thing. They can't just answer random calls. You gotta... Well, sometimes people call, uh, answer it because they think it's not us. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> it works the other way, too. <laughs> they think it's actually so. Hello, Curtis. Hey, Curtis, what's up? It's Adam. I'm, call- I'm calling you right now from an unlisted number. All right, cool. I'm calling you back in two seconds, okay? All right. Boom. All right. So here we go. Curtis. I guess he lives in Orange County. Uh, 714. That's, that's Orange County, right? 714. 714 the San Diego. Ah. Hello. Hello. Is this uh, Curtis Millinder? Yes, sir. Curtis Curtis. How are you, man? What's going on? It's Adam Hunter, Greg Wilson, the Ween Dog. You're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. Uh, not much, guy. Just at home, relaxing. Just finished up training. Nice, man. Uh, you, you got a fight lined up? Uh, no, not yet. See, what's up with that? Because you, you came into the UFC, you fought a short notice fight, uh, and you knocked out uh, Tiago uh, Silva. Uh, who, who did you knock out again? Uh, Tiago Alves, right? Yeah. Yes. Then you fought Max Griffin, uh, who people were picking Max Griffin over you because how, how great Max looked over Mike Perry, and you beat Max Griffin. You looked hard to do. Yeah, you looked amazing. <laughs> you looked amazing in that fight. You can't, I mean, I, I, was like, I was sold by Max Griffin, and then I saw what you did, and I was like, whoa. Uh, and why aren't people fucking like you should, you're, you're on the up, man. You're killing it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, I got offered, uh, last week to, to fill in, uh, fight Vicente Luque at, uh, on, on UFC 229 and, you know, but, you know, it was just too short of a notice, two weeks, um, I was about 25 over and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do that to my body. Right, um, you know, trying to lose that twenty five pounds in two weeks to to take that fight. Okay, um, but you know we it, 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 we we've been waiting. We're 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 on uh, Sean Shelby about getting the fight, and uh, you know, I just I, I I don't I, I wouldn't normally mind a short notice fight, but you know two weeks that's that's that's, that's a little short, and then and then just you know watching the. Eric Ander and Anders and uh, um, uh, Thiago uh, yeah. Santos fight. That, that's that's a prime example why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, where did you think? Of, now, I thought that, like, we were actually debating about that. You know, Greg said he thought Anders was outclassed. I said he. I don't think he was outclassed at all. I think he just got really tired because you can't take a fight of that caliber on a short notice. What are your opinions on that? Yeah, I don't think he was outclassed at all. You know, he he was getting he was getting the takedowns he wanted, um, but you know he he it it wasn't he didn't start looking defeated until he was tired, and he said it. You know, I've never been that tired. Yeah. So now I'm looking right now. You're on a one, two, three. You're on an eight fight winning streak. Eight. You've won nine out of your yes, last sir. ten. I mean that you're you're killing the game. Um, now you actually. Uh, Somehow got involved in some kind of weird Twitter beef. Fernando Gonzalez and MVP were going at it, and then uh, <laughs> you then all the, uh, they were they were fighting, and then you said, "Shut up, you suck." 
Now, was that to Fernando or to MVP? Oh, not nah, to MVP. Um, so so <laughs> when, I, when I first signed to Bellator, that was supposed to be my Bellator debut. Me, me and MVP were both 7-0 and at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, that was supposed to be uh, the, the fight. And the week of the fight, he, I guess he was still hard sparring. And he got a cut. This was actually the Monday, the Monday morning before taking off to uh, to Connecticut. Uh, you know, we got the call that you know he was he was pulling out. And that's why I fought Brennan Ward. And you know, they they tried to put the fight together back together two or three times, and he would just he said no. Ah, uh, you know, so no, I mean, um, yeah. No, MVP it looks like a world so for, beater. I mean, especially in his last fight against Dave Rickles, he I mean, he made Rickles quit. Are you sold on MVP or, or no? I'm never going to be sold on MVP. <laughs> <laughs> never. No. Never. I, I, don't, I don't care what he does or who he does against. I'm never going to be sold on that guy. Why is that? Uh, yeah, I just, I, I just feel like that's, that's, that's the fight I, I, I want. I, was, I, 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 I just want to beat him up. Right, right. Someone asked me. I, I did the, the Instagram, you know, uh, uh, the ask me a question thing, and someone asked me if uh, you know what's what's my dream fight, and I say it's not a dream fight, but you know I just gotta beat him up before I'm done. Now, now, I mean, obviously, you know, he's a black belt in karate. His dad was like a Dan or something. His mom was a black belt. His brother's a black belt. Do you th- now, if you were to fight him, would you keep it on the feet or would you try to get him to the ground? Of course, keep it on the feet. Uh, I can keep it. I can keep him on the feet. His stand up isn't it, it isn't scary to me. Someone with the same attributes, like I'm, I'm long, I'm rangy, I'm fast as shit as well. Like it, it doesn't scare me That's, at all. I mean, look, I'm not. I, I wasn't a fan because I'm like this guy's talking a lot of shit. When when Ronda Rousey lost, he he, he made a video of like mocking her getting beat up, and I thought that was kind of classless Ooh. from him. It's just like you know, after someone gets knocked out, he's like, do the Ronda Rousey dance, and he's a pretty arrogant guy. But I gotta say, he's one of those dudes that I'm like. He just seems to be beating everybody they put in front of him. Granted, they're putting people in front of him that he, that they haven't put a you know a division one wrestler against him. They haven't put a, John, a guy like John Fitch or someone like that. Where I'm like, okay, how's he going to do against that? But I mean, they, if you see, they haven't put anybody quality in front of him. I think the best guy they put in front of him it is Fernando Gonzalez, and if Brendan. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez would have just, you know, kind of came out of his shell maybe a round sooner. He probably would have beat him. Right, right. No, I, I, I hear you. So um, where are you training now? Uh, CSW under uh, Ben Jones, Eric Paulson, out in uh, uh, Fullerton, California. Nice. Now, is that, is that new for you? Or weren't you in Texas before or something? Uh, no, I've been, I've been here with, uh, with, uh, uh, with CSW for about last – actually – I want to say the after taking the loss to Fernando, that's when I made the switch over to CSW. Um, nice. Before I was at Rain Training Center with Mark Munoz, but, but you know it wasn't more, it wasn't uh, so much coaching and learning there. It was more of a, a place to go for for bodies. So um, I, I've always had my own coaching staff, but just adding CSW and Ben Jones and Eric Paulson's knowledge to, to my game that's that's where the difference. This is where that's where. It, you know, the, this Curtis you've seen since Bellator is, you know, really came in, came were, into his own. Were you at Rain when, like, Mayhem used to have his, like, infamous meltdowns and, like, all, all that drama happened? No, I, I, I missed the Mayhem meltdown there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I, did, I, I That was a little, uh, probably just slightly before my time. Got it. But you, you, but you trained with some, I mean, there were monsters over there, like Ellenberger and Munoz. And- oh, yeah. It, it, was, it was crazy. It, it, it was never an easy round there. Yeah, I mean that's what I I just I heard stories. I mean Jake used to tell me that. It was, uh, it, yeah. It, it, the 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 matchups, the you know Chael Sonnen and Tito Ortiz being there the same day, and it, it, it's crazy. I I remember seeing some of the best rounds. Like the still <laughs> to my day, I, uh, uh, to me one one day I was there and uh, Bobby Green and uh, Dos, Dos Anjos were both there and they 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 sparred around and it was just like the best thing I've ever seen. Wow, <laughs> who won? So yeah, uh, it, 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 it's awesome. It, it was fun. Who won that round? Oh, Bobby King Green. 
<laughs> people, pe- honest people say that Bobby Green in the room is the best. He's one of those like you hear like Mike Pyle back in practice. We used to fuck up everybody. Uh, you hear that about Bobby Green also? Yeah. So um, you know, me and me and Bobby Green uh, came up together uh, wrestling in high school. We went to went to separate high schools, but you know, all the tournaments, everything, we would always see each other. I remember Bobby making making guys cry in high school. Wow. And, you know, it's it, so naturally when I started fighting, us being from the same from the same city, I reached out to him. We started training a lot more. And, you know, he has he kind of has like that big brother effect over me in the gym. Like it, it the, the days I think I'm winning around against him, he'll change something. And next thing I'm getting my ass kicked. So. That's awesome. That, uh, that, Bob, Bob, Bobby's the man. So tomorrow night, we got, a, or actually uh, the 29th. Is it tomorrow the 29th? Tomorrow Friday? Or 29th is Saturday? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. Friday. Oh, okay, tomorrow yeah, night, tomorrow tomorrow night, Friday. We, tomorrow night we got Musasi versus Rory McDonald. I think that Musasi is just too big for him. I think this is going to be a case where a good big guy beats a good small guy. Uh, Greg, who, who do you have in that one? Musasi or McDonald? Oh, definitely Musasi. Uh, and you? McDonald. McDonald? Uh, I love McDonald. And you, Curtis? Um, I'm going with McDonald. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, you know, the, the, the fight fan wants McDonald to win, but I, you know, Masasi is, Masasi is the man. So you're picking Masasi? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, but, but at Rory, like, I, I remember Jake telling me that Rory just makes people look dumb. Like he said that the reason why he beat Tyron Woodley and these other guys is just that he does things that just infuriate you in the cage, like like th- things that are intangible. Have you had that kind of experience? Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, he has, uh, and I say this a lot too. Uh, fight IQ. There's not very many guys in MMA that can change things exactly when they need to be changed. And I, I feel like Rory Rory has that. But Masasi has that as well. We just don't have to see it as much with Masasi because there's not very many times we've seen him in actual war. If he loses, it's because he got he got clipped, and you know it's kind of it's, it's over right right after, like with right. the with the Uriah Hall loss. But uh, with Rory, you know, if, if there's something he doesn't like, he's going to shut that shut it down. Just like with Diego Lima's leg kicks, like right. as soon as they really started having an effect on him. He, Took him out, took uh, Diego out of out of out of the, out of, take him out of his element, put him on his back, and kept him there. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Now, also, Vanderlei Silva's fighting Rampage tomorrow night. Uh, I guess they <laughs> they started walking to the cage today. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're gonna have a fucking. I mean, what are we doing here? It's brought to you by AARP. Yeah, really. There's gonna be a, a fucking a, a ramp in there. The I mean, whole place is gonna reek of Ben Gay. The referee is uh, blue from old school. Uh, uh, <laughs> all, <laughs> all the water bottles are gonna be filled with Metamucil. I, exactly. Who do you think wins this fight? Um, I'm rolling a rampage, man. I want to see a cover, cover left hook. Yeah. Knockout again. Yeah, that that <laughs> and that's very that could happen. Uh, that that could happen. Now that way we can have Rampage in uh, Vanderlei Five. <laughs> Jesus. And also on this card, uh, <laughs> Koreshka versus Lima is a good fight, but Aaron Pico versus Leandro Higo. Pico's really stepping it up. I mean, Higo is no joke. Uh, no joke. Uh, he's beating a lot of really good guys. Uh, who do you think wins this fight? You know. Uh, I've watched Aaron Pico's last two fights live, and that kid is on another level. And that kid's the truth, man. I, I, I'm rolling with him. Um, I'm I, I, I'm rolling with him, but this is going to be a test for him. So uh, I'm hoping he he makes it through it. Yeah, me too. I I didn't even know that you wrestled in high school. Did you wrestle in college too? Oh, uh, me? Yeah. Nope. I only up to high school wrestling. You know, I um, try to go walk on at some places, but. Um, by that time, I was already hooked on striking, and uh, mm. I, I made I, I made the the move to striking, learning learning the striking game, and and I'm, I, I probably focused too much on the striking game and got too far away from the wrestling. But you know, I was very very talented wrestler, and uh, you know, every, every now and every now and then I let it show that that I can wrestle. So, um, did you place in the uh, California states? What was that? Did you place in the states in California? 
Um, I won freestyle states. Oh. You won the states in freestyle uh, California? Yes. Damn. You weren't just a fuck. You, you were an amazing wrestler. That's, 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 that's really hard to do. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, and, I, I had uh, no idea. You know, but, you know, I was, I was, during the season, I was a kid with a grave problem and the, uh, uh, not, not so much grades, but, you know, I had one year, my, my senior year, uh, second day at Masters, I just decided I didn't want to make weight no more. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's, 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 didn't I care? Um, my coaches gave me shit about it. And my, still, <laughs> so wow. uh, I, I, I know there. My my high school coaches are waiting for me not to make weight for a fight. Wow! But, yeah, be, because what they did to me for for doing that that day, it, it, you know, it, it's in my head that you know, like, you know, do what do what you're signed up to do. Right. Now, make the weight. Go out there and kick ass. One thousand percent. Now we had a debate over Connor versus Khabib. I obviously I want Khabib to win. I just worry that his stand up, he comes there with his chin in the air and that's where Connor's at his best and he could really hurt him. Um knock it out of the park. Uh, <laughs> knock that chin out of the park. Uh Connor talked me into him winning the fight. <laughs> really? Why is that? Yeah. I, he, he, I, it's, it's just the talk. I, I don't know. It's something about the confidence he has in himself. It was like he, yeah, he, he made me believe he might throw flying triangle or something. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. But, uh, so he, he, like I said, he, he talked me into it. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for Connor, but, you know, if Khabib, if Khabib takes it down and beats him up, I'm not going to be surprised. Right, right. Now, last time you were on the podcast, you were just making a UFC debut. You had no girlfriend. Uh, you were single. Now that you're a big star in the UFC, are you just running through Orange County Tail? Tell us about it. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I got, I got, I got two little boys. I got, a, I got an image of them. I got, a, I got to set the example for them. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, so, uh, oh, so you have, you have, you have two kids, but you are single. I, I'm losing you. Uh, oh, come on! This is complete bullshit. Really? <laughs> I'm going into really? a tunnel. Oh wow! <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, all right. So you're kind of dating somebody, uh, and she's cool with the kids and everything, because you know you're obviously a very charming black guy. You probably have a huge wang, and you're just probably just like just running through shit, right? <laughs> I should be right. Yeah. <laughs> you using this? You know, all my friends. That's exactly what they think I do. Okay, so they think that you're just getting all kinds of girls, but are you, or are you on Tinder, or Soul Swipe, or what's going on here? I, I, hold on, I, I can't hear you. I'm losing you. All right, well, listen, Curtis, uh, thank hello? you so much. Yeah, hello, can you hear us now? I can't tell hello? If, I can't, hello, can you hear us? I can't tell if he really can't hear us or if he's just fucking with us. he really it. can't hear us. Oh, he really can't hear us? Curtis, can you hear us? Hello. I, barely. Okay, so we were wondering if you're uh, getting a lot of, uh, if you're cruising for box a lot, if you're if you're doing well uh, with the ladies. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I steer away from it. Can't, I can't get in trouble. Can't get in trouble. I have to stay focused, and you know, I think I think that can be my vice. You know, I'm not big on. You know, I don't do drugs. I don't drink. But women, that can that can be my vice. That can be the the vice that ruins it all for me and, and sends me sends me into that sunken place. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm trying to stay as focused as possible. But you're looking for the focus but you're looking one. for the one. You're looking you're looking for the right girl. Like the, the right girl will yep. get you to settle. Okay, all right, good. Well good luck. If any if any people, if any girls want to follow you or, or, or go into your DMs, uh, where can they find you? Curtis Curtis one seventy on Instagram. Curtis Curtis the one on Twitter. All right. Well thanks so much, Curtis, and uh, good luck with everything, brother. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Take thanks care. you guys. No problem. Peace. Nice guy. Fucking straight killer. You ever watch his fights? No. Dude's a monster. Nice. Fucking monster. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, also, Bob Sapp's fighting. Are you serious? Weekend. Yeah, yeah, he's fighting. Nice. Uh, yeah, our boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's fighting. Uh, uh, there's, so, I'm down there with this kidnapped woman in, in Uganda. <laughs> wait, wait, Bob, are you calling in right now? Well, it's good to be back here on the MMA Roasted Podcast. So, Bob, are you now you've lost... 
uh, 12 in a row. I think maybe even 15 in a row. The, uh, yeah, but uh, that means I'm 23 and 15, so that feels pretty good. Actually, your, your record actually uh, is not 23 and 15. Your record is 11 and 20. Uh, must be thinking of my criminal record. <laughs> no, no, you've never been arrested. Well, That's I, right, I, I've I, never I been uh, actually have. charged. But, um, but you're fighting in Ryzen against uh, a guy. They said he's 0 and 0, but he weighs 350. Uh, Abdel Rahman Shalant. He doesn't have a chance. Uh, he's you know, win? No, Are I, you going to win? I'm going to win. Uh, after I win this legal battle, <laughs> I was with this woman who was kidnapped, they told me, in Uganda. And uh, <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> No, are are you excited for this fight? Uh, yeah, I plan I, to throw him in my trunk, and uh, I'm gonna drive him to Canada and uh, see if I get arrested for that. Now, have you trained for this fight? As much, sure. I've been training every day at Golden Corral. Okay, so Golden Corral's not a gym, though. But it has a gym-like smell. All right, now, all right. So you're gonna, you're okay. Now, people are concerned that you might throw this fight like you. You know, allegedly through a lot of fights. It's like you're not really trying. You get taken down. You tap out. Who wins? Okay, uh, me for losing and getting paid before the fight even starts. <laughs> if uh, I believe I made that point clear last time, if you can write the check and it clears, well, you're gonna get what you deserve. Yeah, but it's kind of you take away from the whole spirit of the sport and like you know the. You whole. really know nothing about how the world really works, do you? How does it work? You get paid in advance. <laughs> Everything is completely rigged. Yeah, but I mean, when I want to watch a fight, I want to see the guy actually try to win, not tap and get paid. That's why would I want to try and win? That might hurt. <laughs> yeah, but losing is so easy. All right, so. Literally anyone can do it. <laughs> yeah, but and it pays better than winning. I don't know if you're familiar with how much they pay fighters, but it's way less than gamblers pay losers. How uh, come you now sound like an 1800s southern <laughs> plantation owner? I have a lot of variation <laughs> uh, ever <laughs> since that whole kidnapping hilarity <laughs> in Uganda. I declare. <laughs> it didn't sound like it was hilarious. <laughs> it sounded like someone was kidnapped. <laughs> you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> now, Bob, if I f- tune into Rising to, on Saturday night. I know the girl, the girl, the trunk's trying to get out. <laughs> all right. All right. So, Bob, good luck in your fight. Uh, I hope you win. I already won. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean you already won? I cashed the check. But no, are you going to wait till you get taken down to tap? Or are you going to tap during the walk? I'm actually going to I'm going to tap during the introduction. <laughs> you know when they come out and we're supposed to shake hands, that's my technically going to be my tap. <laughs> well, that's not good. Come on, man. Will you please try this fight? I t- I am trying to pay my bills. <laughs> I mean, how much are your bills? More than they're going to pay me to try and win. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. I guess I'm going to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was Bob Sapp. Uh, that was, I, I had no idea he was calling in today. I, I'm, I'm so happy to hear from him. I'm still a fan, even though it seems like he's not really trying in his fights. Uh, I'm still a fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's fighting on Ryzen. Also on this card is... He's fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, is Haraguchi's fighting, as well as Crow Cop is fighting. Uh, Miracle Crow Cop. Well, how do you watch Ryzen? And does that require a time machine? What is <laughs> the fuck is going on? Are they just running? Is there someone? Is there an MMA graveyard that someone's going around and just like raising the dead and like injecting some kind of zombie fluid into them? And be like, we need your name on the card. <laughs> Nobody recognizes any of these other motherfuckers. No, but they don't test in Ryzen. They don't, they don't test for steroids. So that's why Crow Cop is now, like, murdering people again. Where do you watch him. it, though? Uh, you, there's an app. I think it's on Fight TV on the oh. app. Uh, but all, also, <laughs> Can't wait to hear about it. Also, Andy Wynn. Yeah. Also, uh, Darren Cruzshake's taking on Diego Brandao, who uh, used to be married to Heather Joe Clark. Are you serious? Yeah, remember Diego? He's yeah. the guy, the ultimate fighter, who got, like, he was, like, threatening to murder everybody in the gym. Oh. And then he got into a couple other fights. And he fought Conor McGregor, he was, but he was, like, homeless before that, living in his car. Uh, he's fighting Darren Cruzshank, who's a really good fighter. So that should be good, too. Yeah, a lot of good fights this weekend. How many bottles of, what's, it, what's Conor's whiskey called? Oh, uh, 
supposed to be doing pretty well. Irish Supreme? Irish Supreme. How many bottles do you think CB Gold has bought so far? Oh, uh, why don't we ask him? CB, uh, how many bottles of Irish Supreme have you bought so far? Well, there were only 332 (laughs) bottles actually released onto the American market. Of those, I bought 331, uh, and one of those is currently up my asshole. (laughs) It's up your asshole? That's right. So I can feel Connor in me. Now, is it hard to sit with a... those, those bottles in your asshole? At first. All right. Now, Now it's like riding a bike <laughs> with no seat. Do you even drink whiskey? Of course. Well, anally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink it so much as I just absorb it through All my right, asshole. Well, good, good for you. Uh, so, 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 Joe, how's it? what's up with the girl? Everything's going good, dude. Approaching the, the six-month mark, so only a few more months to go before uh, you know, I consummate the, the relationship. Mm. Can't wait. I hope I last longer than two seconds. Not a chance. You're Probably gonna not, come dude. just walking towards the bed. Now, are yeah. you jerking off though? In the meantime, uh, I mean, yeah. I just, I the thing is, if I don't jerk off before I go see my girlfriend, I just get super horned up. Right. You know, so I gotta jerk off before just to keep the the mentality in order. You know, so of I'm course. not always like trying to grab her ass or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys are in a really good place. Sounds yeah. super classy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you watch the Kavanaugh hearings, by the way? Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, <sighs> I, I think we should leave that uh, out of this podcast. <laughs> Every time we go there, it just stirs shit up. I'm all for due process. Just keep your... Uh, let's, you're, you're, let's, you're, you're guilty that, until... You know, uh, you're innocent you're until guilty. guilty. That, well, you no, nailed it the no, first time. That's, that's how the way we are it now. is now. That's how it is. And exactly. That's horrible. It's not good. It, it's not. That's not the way it's supposed that's to be. That's not good. But I, but I think maybe he thinks he's telling the truth because he was drunk and doesn't remember it. Well, here's one thing I do know about abuser-victim relationships uh, is that the abuser never remembers. Because to them, it was just fooling around. It's always the victim that remembers. He says it wasn't even at the party. So, listen, I, of course he says that now. He, he, he doesn't remember it at all. Hold on. But that's just... The- hey, Diego Sanchez. So, please leave me a text message. It'll be the easiest way now, to... leave a message? Oh, 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 there you go. Yeah, yeah too I, many bitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyway, yeah. I, so, you, you, but, you, but he said he's claiming. First of all, Let's who has not, a calendar? Just don't. Just it? his don't. calendar. He wouldn't put like tried to rape just somebody in, in the calendar. Right? That's just not even. <laughs> Let's keep it to sex and MMA. That's what we do here. <laughs> Every just, time we try and get outside of our lane, we just crash headlong, head on into a wall of people saying, shut the fuck up. And listen, you know what? Here's the thing. You know, you know I, I, you I can't get it. You're you right. This is an MMA show. And you can't get away from it anywhere else. You really so. can't. You know, it's just, you know, we'll discuss that privately off off mic. And, and we're allowed to have our opinions. But, you know, I don't want people getting all worked up over nothing yeah yeah yeah. i I hear you i hear you so uh anyway i'm I'm going to vancouver tomorrow night i've never been to vancouver in my life you ever been to vancouver oh yeah canada it's uh uh, it's seattle but like 50 miles like it's just like seattle looks like seattle feels like seattle same weather tons of asians just like (laughs) seattle like I mean, no, they have a, a robust Asian. I, in fact, more I imagine in Vancouver than I think in Seattle. I'm gonna see my and not my, in a bad way. I'm just saying they have a very large Asian. I'm gonna community. see my mom's. See, like my mom, my biological mom. I haven't seen since I was three. She's, mm-hmm. she's institutionalized. Had a lot of problems with mental problems, schizophrenia. But her family has. Dad all, really can't pick them, can he? Uh, he her, like, but her her family has all contacted me through Facebook, and you know, and I I'm friends with my cousin Brandon. I, I met him a couple times, and it's very nice for her family, but. Her, her, my mom's brother's daughter is coming to my show. My cousin, basically, and I haven't met her ever. I well, mean, that's the way you go. The family's like that. I know. It's just, it's hard. It's, it's hard, you know. Well, I, I mean, a, it's only hard if you think of it that well, way. Well, because my, well, my mom just I, don't. I had, I had, you know I, what it is? You're expecting to like you're gonna have to act some certain way because they're related to you. Just be nice. 
Well, because I had my, my stepmom, who I call my mom, who raised me, who's the one who passed away. Listen, before. unless they see your act, they're not going to be disappointed. <laughs> so you're gonna, I'm kidding. They're going to be so proud of you. They're going to see you up there. They're going to think you're a star. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's just People hard. don't realize how little we get paid. <laughs> they, We're well, like fighters in the UFC. It's true. and it's, uh, Yeah, I know. They see you up there, and they're like, oh, my God, they got to be making a fortune. It's like, eh, someone's making a fortune. Some, right. Some, by the way, we're calling right now Andy... The Crazian. Fuck. What are you, what? Come on, fucking, come on, pick up the phone. Uh, so, anyway. So, what else, what's going on with you, Joe? Not much. Uh, just, uh, just waiting for that eighth month, eight month marker in my relationship. So, all right, thanks, buddy. So, Nate Diaz uh, <laughs> said, basically tweeted out, He's looking forward to fighting Dustin Poirier at the new 165 pound weight That's class. It's a huge announcement, dude. But the UFC didn't announce that. He announced it. Really? Yeah. Like you can't just announce your own weight class. Oh, I thought that was can't. official. No, he just they said they have no idea what he's talking about. So oh, Nate Diaz man. just basically said that he has a, there's a new weight class now. Um, which I think there should be a weight class. Yeah. But I, I guess fighters don't get to just announce their own weight classes, do they? Um, I don't know, but I think that would draw fans, dude. I'm a huge fan of that concept. Uh, well, it should be because it sh you have 150, you have you know 155, and you go to 170. But the, but you can't have a 165 and a 170. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Then you got to have a 175 and then a 185. You can't you know then everybody moves up five pounds at 170. Right. So that's the issue, which which I don't have a problem with either. It's just funny that like Nate Diaz is all of a sudden is like, there's a new weight class in town, and I'm <laughs> I'm fighting for the championship. That's a great is fight. It in the, too, is dude. it uh, in the same uh, league that Bubba's in? No, in the U.S. <laughs> in, 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 like in the UFC. Like that, I mean that I mean that's hilarious, but it's just like uh, it's just crazy. I heard someone say. Um, in a comment on Instagram that they only made that division so Connor can have three belts. 165? Yeah. They I, made that for Connor McGregor. No, because I know. You know what we should do? What's we that? should start our own fight division. We should. Our own fight league and like you and I will fight each other for the championship uh, and with a really sweet belt. Listen, people, Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, EFTS, options, and cryptos all commission free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a non-intimidating way for stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. It's simple and intuitive. They got a clear design with data presented in an easy to digest way. I'm telling you people, look, they have no commission fees. Other brokers just charge up to $10 for every trade. Robinhood does not charge commission fees. It's uh, easy to uh, check out design, all right? Their web platform also lets you view stock collections, okay? And uh, analyze ratings of buy, hold, sell for every stock. And you learn by doing. Learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks and track favorite companies with personalized news feed. Also, custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. So, listeners, we're giving you a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at mmaroasted.robinhood.com. That's mmaroasted.robinhood.com. Check them out right now. Santa Cruz Medicinals. They make potent lab-tested CBD formulas. Their 1,000 milligram CBD-infused coconut oil is amazing. You can add it to your coffee, shakes, or use topically to reduce inflammation. I know Joe uses it, right? Mm -hmm. You put it in your coffee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now you're sounding like a strange black woman. But oh, I'm telling it. you, all right? I love it, dude. The, Sounds like yes, he uh, is. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> but the fats help the CBD absorb. I'm telling you, it, it helps with pain relief. It, it's it's healthy. It's good for you. It's good for the soul. All right. And their 1,000 milligram olive oil is amazing to add to recipes and can make any recipe CBD infused. Any recipe, okay? You want to make? You could add CBD thanks to Santa Cruz Medicinals. All right. They make uh, they make a 2000 milligram CBD infused MCT oil. It's very potent and really helps with pain. I'm doing Muay Thai four days a week. I am in pain like no other. But you know what? I bet you are. I take this stuff. How's that going? I love it. Have you taken any shots to the face? A couple. How's uh, that? Uh, uh, all right. It hurts your mouth, doesn't it? I, oh, I, it's, and I worry about losing my tooth because I have a fake tooth in the front. Oh, yeah. But man. I'm telling you, if I did lose my tooth, you know what I would do? I would check out Santa Cruz Medicinals. Sweet. All right? uh, you got their, their products are gluten-free, sugar-free, lab-tested, and affordable. 
Just use MMA Roasted for $5 off your order. Go to scmedicinals.com. That's scmedicinals.com. Highly recommend that. And I got to tell you, okay, my wife likes taking baths. I like taking baths. Who doesn't like taking baths? Greg, you like it? Uh, no, I don't, I don't do it. Not that I don't enjoy it. I just don't do it very often. Well, listen, okay, next time you take a bath, use the Calm Balm. It's a patented uh, cannabis oil bath bomb that through a proprietary formula will allow the CBD to be better absorbed by the skin, offering maximum relief to people with chronic pain and anxiety. I know, Joe, you have both, okay? Mm -hmm. The Calm Balm is made by and for those suffering from chronic pain. And for that reason, we're taking relaxation to the next level. I'm telling you, uh, I need to relax. We all need to relax, especially. And, and nothing is better than these Calm Balm CBD bath bombs made with natural ingredients. And yes, you read that right, okay? Uh, they're high quality CBD and proprietary ingredients that allow the pores to open up for maximum CBD absorption. They're 100% vegan, organic, cruelty-free bath bombs made in Boston, all right? And uh, who doesn't love people in Boston, all right? Uh, their bath bombs featured in Calm Bomb allow you to care for yourself while supporting others. Through self-care, though self-care is seen as a luxury that best benefits you, in this case, you're truly helping others with $5 from each box going directly to families in need. All right, help other people out, good people. Quit being so selfish, all right? Uh, and their sister, mombomb.org, helps moms and their families by providing those going through a tough time. And I, I know I love me, my wife being a mom uh, herself. Uh, I am now all about moms. I've always been about moms. But, uh, but now I, I uh, listen, me I'm too. telling you, okay, because those, that money you go, it goes to meal delivery, housekeeping, laundry or child care, to moms in need. Now, uh, families can also be nominated for assistance by mombomb.org uh, forward slash apply for help. So... Uh, I am all about it. Uh, Calm Bomb is a revolution in relief. Okay, they uh, ensure that CBD is fully absorbed and every box sold that helps struggling moms by donating $5 to charity. Calm Bomb is now searching for crowdfunding partners. Want to be a partner, people? This is the place to become partners with, all right? The donations are inexpensive and the rewards are long lasting. And now, for unlimited supply, my listeners can get Calm Bombs at a huge discount by going to our website at www.buybombshelpmoms.com. So that's buybombshelpmoms.com and clicking their Indiegogo page. All right, listen, people. Have you ever looked at a photo of yourself from five years ago and thought, damn, I look young. What happened to me? What happened to that guy? Where do all these wrinkles come from? When do I start looking like my dad or my grandpa or my great grandpa? It happens, okay? Some things get better with age, wine, for example. Uh, but you know what doesn't look good, better with age, is not the case to your face, okay? We gotta keep you looking young. Most guys don't do nearly enough for their skin, despite all it does for them. Soap and water are just not enough to prevent aging. But there's something you can do to help. Go to forhims.com. It's a one stop shop for skincare, hair loss, sexual wellness for men. Their anti-aging kit is a custom prescription cream tailored to you that your skin can keep your skin looking youthfully smooth by reducing the appearance of wrinkles and lines, okay? People don't like, I mean, women or men, whatever you're into, they're never gonna be like, oh, I'm really into you because of all your wrinkles or, or the lines in your face, okay? Not good, unless you meet some kind of, like it worked for Yoda, but not other people. Okay, so listen, 4 Hims connects you with doctors who will evaluate your skin and tell you what you need to do to make it better. All you need to take a couple of pictures, answer a few questions, boom, it's your skin. Do you want a face, to be a face in the crowd or the face in the crowd? You want to stand out? People are like, well, who's that guy? Look at that guy. Look at that beautiful face. All right? Order now and save $20 off your first month of the Hims Anti-Aging Kit. Look, uh, lock in those locks, those looks now, okay? And get your first month of anti-aging for just $20 off. Go to uh, forhims.com slash roastedsc. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash roastedsc. Forhims.com slash roastedsc. You'll thank me later. Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Is this Andy? Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello? Hey, Andy. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. You're on the MA Roasted Podcast. 
Oh, shit. Hey. <laughs> hey. What, what's going on? So, if you guys don't know this, Andy Wynn is this, that she goes by the Crasian. Andy the Crasian one. Beautiful girl. Love it. Uh, I mean, when I say beautiful, the only Vietnamese girl in a uh, professional fighter, I think. Uh, one of them, at least. And, uh, and she's got freckles. Uh, freckles. Sweet. And you should see her on Instagram. She's like, like a lot of videos I watch online. She's naked half the time or, or very close to naked. Uh, <laughs> naked? Not, not totally naked, but, you know, naked enough. Um, and you're fighting in Ryzen this week uh, on the same card as Crow Cop and Bob Sapp. Are you excited? What's going on? I am super excited. Um, we were supposed to be fourth on the card, but unfortunately, Kid Yamamoto passed away, so they bumped us to co-main event. Really? Pretty awesome. So I'm after uh, Crow Cop, but right, before the hot. main event. Now, 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 are you now? How pumped are you? For, are you for this fight? By the way, I'm just showing Greg and Wean Dog a picture of you. I think Wean Dog. My, I think Wean Dog just busted. Yeah. My um, official uh, review is. Ugh. Yeah, uh, they're very attractive woman here. Um, very attractive woman. Now, who's the girl you're fighting? Uh, t talk to us. I am rematching Miyu Yamamoto. She's a three-time gold medalist Olympian wrestler. She is Kid Yamamoto's sister. Okay. All right, so you're, so you're going to be the bad girl. They're going to boo you, right? I mean, they didn't fly me here to win. Right. Now, are you... <laughs> now... That was honest. Now, how excited are you? Now, who won the first fight? I did. You did. Okay. Was it, was it close, or did you, uh, did you uh, stop her? Uh, first round, we're um, armbar. Nice. There we go. So this fight, are we going to try to do the same thing, or are we expecting a whole different girl? Talk to me. She's gotten better. She's gotten more comfortable with her feet, with her standing. So I think you guys can expect uh, some stand-up. She might fight emotionally since she just lost her brother. That, yes. you know, that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. If you fight emotionally, you see people get gassed out, you know. So we'll just see. Um, I'm just glad and, and uh, fortunate and honored to be back here. And uh, as we speak, we're cutting. I'm cutting weight right now. now <laughs> nice. Now, you got there like yesterday, right? Yes. Is yeah. that, now, is that too late to be fighting in Japan on Sunday? I mean, shouldn't you have gotten there a couple weeks earlier? Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you, I had to get acclimated, so I started waking up at 3, 4 a.m. America time, Eastern Standard Time, because I knew that if I was fourth on the card, I'll be fighting around that time. Well, they bought the Sukumi, which is better because I'm an early bird, and I will be fighting around 7.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be on Fuji Live. That's how I know it's 7.20, which is 8.20 p.m. here in Tokyo time. Right. And how much weight do you have to cut? Uh, I was uh, 113 before I had breakfast. I just had breakfast. So I just need to go down to 108 by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I have exactly 24 hours. To lose five pounds. But you don't have much fat on you, though. Yeah. I, I, I lose my, my boobs, which I don't have much anyway. That's all padded, what you guys see. And uh, I lose my butt. I, I hate it. I hate it. But luckily, you know, the public in mock weigh-ins is hours later, so I get to fill out a little bit. Nice. Nice. I'm now, okay with that. Now, usually when you come out there, you, you go out to American Woman. You're doing some kind of like a strip tease walk. Uh, it's really hot. Uh, everyone in the crowd, bus. Are you going to do that again? Uh, this one's not going to be anything sexy or striptease. Uh, I'm walking out to Smooth Criminal by uh, Michael Jackson. Nice. After what happened to uh, Andrea, uh, Donnie, uh, Aaron is a smooth criminal. And uh, he used to call her Annie. So I remember that weekend, uh, you know, when all that tragedy was going on, I kept on saying, Annie, are you okay? Annie, are you okay? So <laughs> it works out perfectly for that song. So if, if you guys don't know, you were roommates with Andrea Lee. Andrea KGB Lee, uh, another great fighter like yourself, who was living with her husband, who I don't know much about him. I know he went to jail for murder, and he has schwa stickers on him. Uh, so he has Nazi signs. Probably not the kind of guy that I would invite over to my house uh, or that I want to be around. But he says he was a changed guy. He changed his ways. You kind of went in there. He was very abusive. He was beating her up. You thought he was going to kill her. You walked in. You called the cops. He's now on the loose and on the run. Is that kind of what happened? Pretty, pretty much in a short summary, yeah. Now, is, now are they back together? Or, uh, hopefully not, right? No, she's here with me. She's cornering me here. Ah, okay. So you two are in Japan, which is good. You're away from this person, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, it's totally done, right? We're not, we're not going back? She better not. Okay. She better not. I put my life on the line. That was my friend. That was my coach. That was... You know, I lost a, a team. You know, I, I lost a lot out of that. 
Wait, that guy was your coach? Yeah, he was my coach. Oh, God. Her husband was both our coach. Uh, so who's your coach now? Well, I, um, since I was going against a wrestler, I, uh, I flew up to Michigan at SFS, and I trained with James Gray. He had some atom weights uh, that are wrestlers, and pretty much I got them to take me down and beat me up, and I just have to figure how to get back up or submit them. So that was the camp I did up there in uh, Brighton, Michigan. So, and uh, I flew James Gray up here also. So those, are, those two are going to be in my corner. I also have a special guest. My third guy coming out is Phil Baroni. <laughs> no way. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Wasn't there rumors that you and Phil hooked up? Hell no. He was talking about ring girls or something. It was oh, not me. Okay. No, but I mean, Phil probably no, be in love with you. Phil will probably be in love with you. Has, has Phil tried to hook up with you? No, 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 no. I all think right. he's trying to, no, he's, flirt, he's flirting with other girls out here. Oh, all right. And, that's hilarious. So you flew, okay. Wow. That's, oh my God. Okay, so... You so you guys have to tune in and watch. It's going to be hilarious. I don't. He better not make a scene, actually. <laughs> okay, so you got rid of that one guy uh, who, because he was bad news, and then you flew in Phil Baroni to coach you. <laughs> <That's>, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Phil's not in that. Phil happens to be a good guy and a loyal guy and, and a nice yeah, and a he, nice he's person. He's not going to be yelling ringside. He can't come ringside. No, and he's not going <laughs> to. And he, he's and he doesn't abuse women or or any of that shit. So, uh, uh, but he's a character. Jesus Christ, that guy's a character. Uh, it, oh, a, yeah, big character. Yeah, me and Phil go way back. Tell him I said hello. And I think that I you, will. And and and, and uh, so is Phil going to try to get a fight in Ryzen? Is that is that one of one of his goals? I don't know what he's trying to do. Let's see. I ha I don't know what his intentions are. He bought his own flight here, so actually, oh, you know, okay. he wanted to come out. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Now, do you have a boyfriend? Or are you single? I do have a boyfriend. His right. name is Danny Osterman, and he lives in Charleston, South Carolina. Is he a fighter, nice. too? Hell no. I don't date fighters. Oh. They're fucking crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what does Daniel Osterman do? Uh, project manager, uh, architect for pools, outdoor pools for houses and stuff. Is he, is he, is he, is he Jewish? He's gorgeous and, uh, he, uh, he, and he's smart. No, is he, no, is he Jewish? He makes me laugh. He sounds Jewish. Oster, is he Jewish? Osterman, is that German? Jewish? No, he's not German. Jewish. Oh, uh, Jewish. I don't know. He's white. Oh, because Osterman. I was that's that, German. A man, it's German. Osterman. Oh, I think I just think yeah, that'd that's be Osterman. But that would be a good way to piss off her, the, uh, Andrea's ex-husband. Just date like a nice Jewish guy. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, Andy, you got to get out of this. Look, you got to get because you're a great fighter and you're hot. You're very marketable. Uh, you got you got a lot of things going for you. Uh, we just got to get out of this chaos, you know. You don't. You're just too yeah. good. You're just too good for that shit. You don't. You don't need to be involved in that in that whole that whole thing, you know. Oh hell no! I, I left right afterwards. What are you talking about? Good, good, because I was I was worried about you. I honestly was. No, I left. I flew out right away. All right, good. I uh, got time for that. Are you back in Vegas? I love it. What an attitude. This girl's the best. No, I don't live in Vegas. I just happen to see you there because I visit there a lot. Uh, yeah. No, when I met you, I was like, "Are you a fighter?" She's like, "No." You told me you weren't a fighter. And then yeah, I don't like to tell people I am and stuff, and then people get attention and ask you questions. I was there just to enjoy myself. Like, you know, you're an yeah. entertainer. I am too, but I don't need people to ask right. me. I was relaxing, you know, probably ate an edible. I didn't want to kill my buzz. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, you don't <laughs> like attention. Laugh. Yeah, I'm looking at your picture of you. You're naked in like a shower uh, on Instagram, and you, and you wrote, I need a hot shower. And you're telling me you don't like attention? Come on. What, what is this nonsense? It's not attention. It's, I was trying to sell my calendar. Oh, okay. There you go. Where can people buy your calendar? It's sold out now. We have to make 2019. Oh. But, Hell yeah. All right. Now, by the way, you told me you were to get me a t-shirt. And then I never, and I, and I sent you my address, and I never got a t-shirt. So well, you know. sorry. If you have Donnie chasing you around town, you know, <laughs> I forget t-shirts too. <laughs> that's a good point. I did not see that coming. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a, now, now there's um, another picture of you. You're spread eagle. You have a football in front of your 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 hoo ha. Let me see that one. Uh, Let me see that. I'm wearing. Oh yeah. What was that? Boy shorts behind there. Oh you. Oh oh. That's what that's what everyone's Don't gonna ruin. It. That's what everyone's gonna think. Yeah. Are you out of your? Come on, give me a break. Now, um, so you're a big New Orleans fan. So you're a, you're a big Saints fan. Well, I was in Louisiana, so I got to support the team, you know. Uh, I am. I only. I'm, I'm a football fan. I, you know, I. I cheer for the people who I bet on, basically. Right. Smart. I like this girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, uh, another picture of you. You're wearing red high heels. You have like a Japanese, like a Karate Kid thing on you, and you have a trophy. 
Was that the trophy you won for the last fight against this girl? Yes, that's the Ryzen trophy from New Year's Eve. Now, are you going... It's a lucky trophy. Now, are you going to be uh, wearing that outfit again? No. Oh, I can't fight in that. All because right. I can't fight in that. A good I'll point. have some nip slips. Ha! Listen, you're, you're, you're a good sport. I can tell you you have to lose weight, though, because you seem very pissed. Uh, Thank so, you. Uh, no problem. So you got to lose weight. You're losing. Now, how, how are you going to lose this uh, seven pounds in uh, 24 hours or five pounds? It's just, uh, it's just water weight. So I have a personal sauna, so I sit in this little tent. Oh, nice. Nice. And, and I just sweat. That's it. And what do you do with the runoff <laughs> at the end? What? You got to talk more. What do you do with the runoff uh, when you're done sweating in it? Like, where do you, where's that drip go? You can okay, it. it goes down to the bottom, and I just wipe it up with towel. Oh, just like a cum towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you could, if you could uh, sell one of those on eBay, that would be greatly appreciated. TV Gold already bought seven of them. Um, <laughs> now, okay, so Daniel Osterman, how long have you been with this guy for? Uh, only nine months. All right, all right. Are you, are you in love? I love him. Nine months? Ooh, yeah, that's love. You love him, but you're not no! in love. <laughs> After this, he's probably going to get mad. <laughs> oh, come on. You love him, but you're not in love with him? Yes, yeah, she is. I'm in love with him. Why is it so high pitched, huh? Why is it so no. high pitched? <laughs> now, how I'm did... cutting weight and I'm aggravated with everybody, so it doesn't really matter. That I, makes I'm sense. probably not in love with anybody right now. Okay? Now, now, how did he get you? Uh, he found me on Tinder. Oh. Yeah. See, sometimes it and works then out. He, you know, we were just going to be on each other's date for a New Year's Eve, and he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I said yes. Really? Nice. Yep. Now, what was it about him that you liked so much? Uh, he was mature, and uh, you know, Tinder's got a bad rep. I thought we were just gonna go on New Year's date and you know just date you know and that's it nothing nothing serious. I wasn't looking for a boyfriend, and he he was looking for something serious, and that's it. Mm. Well, nice. I'm happy. I'm happy you're happy because you like you said you've had you've had a tough run this last couple of months. Uh, so I'm happy that things are actually on the up. And you have another fight scheduled like in two weeks or something? Hell no. Uh, six weeks after this fight, so it's, it's perfect timing. Six weeks in November 17th in Honolulu. Honolulu, Hawaii. Yep. Who is, and you're fighting Tiana Valle. Who is this girl? She fought on Bellator. She got uh, rear naked choked by Carrie Melendez. Okay, so you're going to win this fight. Uh, I better. Yes. Um, and then, so you're, you're fighting some, uh, Sunday night and rising. Uh, anything planned for the, like, the weigh-ins? Anything uh, fun you're going to do? Uh, nope. Uh, you know, Japan is not a football fan. They're soccer, so I'm going to wear a little soccer uniform. Mm. And it says Japan on my ass. <laughs> what, do you mean? what do you mean it says, like, you got a tattoo of Japan on your ass? No, the, the little soccer uniform, it has Japan written across my ass. Oh, sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what you were it's talking okay. about. It's okay. You'll see pictures, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure I will. Um, but now you seem like, now... I like you, Andy. You're a good, you're a good person. I think you're a good I person. I like you too. You're 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 you're, you're a sweetheart. Um, and I think that this fight uh, is going to be good. I, I like I like Ryzen for you. Are they are they paying you well? Ryzen pays me more than America. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, um, do you have any plans to go to Bellator or UFC or uh, you know? Well, if UFC opens up the atom weight, but they haven't, so I'm I still I'm still a free agent. I'm not with King of the Cage in, in, uh, anymore right now. They want me to sign a five fight contract. I don't want to. I I don't have commitment problems. I just don't want a five fight contract exclusively. So I like that I could get to go to Hawaii for the first time in my life after Japan. I'm just traveling around the world and enjoying my life, you know, and love to do what I love to do, win or lose. You're gonna win. Uh, now, if I want to watch this fight, how do, how do I do it? You have to get on Fight TV. It's a uh, you have to download the app, or if you have a Fire Stick, and you know, just get that. <laughs> right, right. Fight TV. Gotcha. And if I want to follow you, how do I do it? Uh, it's Andy the Crazy One. And uh, that, that's it. Andy the Crazian on Twitter. Andy the Crazian on Instagram. The Crazian oh. on Facebook fan page. Now is this guy? Now is this guy one, really on the run still from the police? Uh, yeah. He he has not turned himself in yet. Uh, are you he doing... must know something that we don't know. Why are you on the run for a twenty five hundred dollar bail? That's just retarded. Now, how many times did you see him beat up Andrea? Uh, I didn't see it because it was behind closed doors. I opened the door, he got up, so I didn't see it. I, I heard it. I heard her grunt. I heard, you know, what she's yelling and stuff. She told me stories. I, uh, I saw him kind of like throat punch her like a, like a year ago. 
or something like that. Like, like it looked like he punched her, but she told me that he grabbed her by the throat. And I don't know. It happened so fast. Right. All that, all that chaos happened so fast. I'm not used to it. I, I'm kind of like in shock when, when I'm seeing this, you know. So I, it's it's kind of like a blur to me. But how long were you living with them for? Three years total. But I uh, but I have family and friends back in South Carolina. So I'm always flying back and forth for the holidays, and that's when it happens. You know, like I don't, I don't know. Gotcha. But if it, but if it comes to putting this guy away, you'll testify and get him. Get him. I to- I will, and I'm already in this date. Why not? Shit. Fuck. Well, listen, you gotta. Yeah, I'm happy you're okay. He never laid a, laid a hand on you, right? Nope. He's never touched me ever. Uh, well, tell Andrea I'm sorry that she has to go through this. I'm happy she's okay because I'm a, I'm a fan of Andrea as well. Uh, we've had her on the podcast when she was fighting Rachel Ostovich. We, we, we had a, a press conference with those two, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So cool. Uh, are you going to call anyone out if you win or when you win? Yeah, I want a rematch on Rena. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, is she going to be there? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for that when they give me the mic. Got it. I like it. I like it. Greg, any more questions? For Nothing. Me? That's exciting. Good for you. Andy Wynn, rising this week. The crazy. Uh, now, Bob, now, Bob Sapp, is a, uh, he's, he, the guy's a beast. Uh, he actually has his own dildos uh, after him, modeled after him. If he hits on you, are you going to stay faithful to Dan, or are you going to be mesmerized by the beast? Uh. I, I told you I don't date fighters. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Nice. Hey, let me ask you something. On your Instagram, you have a picture of you that's like made up of tiles. Like it's several different pictures that come together to make one picture of you like with your heel and your yes. panties pulling it off your ass. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> no, was that hard to was that hard to shoot? Was that hard to shoot? Because it's in like four no, different no, pictures no, all put they're, together. They're, they're or did shoot you, it that way. It's just a, did you use a... A filter yeah, the heel is pulling the thong. Yeah. Yeah, crack kills. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I crack, love that one. That's really hot. Joe, any questions for the great Andy Wynn? Hey, Andy, it's me, Ween Dog. Do what? <laughs> it's Nothing. me, Ween Dog. All right, go on. Uh, I just have a question. This is a serious question. Um, have you ever had to, to fight in an MMA fight while on your period? And what do you do if you're on your period? You just like put a tampon in there. And are you a better fighter on your period or a worse fighter on your period? Uh, okay. So, yeah, we wear tampons. Uh, I fight like every three months, so I'm pretty sure I've been on my period. The only thing is like holding water weight. The cutting part is a little yeah. like stubborn, uh, and yeah. that's about it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank You're you for, welcome. Thank Next. you for being cool about that. <laughs> only, Sorry. Only, <laughs> only the hard-hitting questions here and then arrows yes, the right. podcast. Very serious journalism here. We don't take them out of the box very often. Yes. So. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but thanks so much, Andy. Good luck. We're all going to be watching you. Thank you for having me. No, And then give me a shout out. Be like, listen, at the end of the fight, be like, I want to thank my former lover, Adam Hunter. I know he's married now uh, it, or something. Or, or just say, I have a huge crush on Adam Hunter from MMA Roasted. Uh, hope you I, and, I will uh, make sure I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you and your baby are doing well or something. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I hope your wife is okay. Uh, my wife's feeling better. Oh, yeah, she's feeling better. We had supposed to do a show Tuesday, but she had, she's okay. She's doing, she's doing good. Well, thank, awesome. you, thank you, Andy, and good luck with everything. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. It was Andy Wynn. Yeah. She's cool, man. Yeah. Very cool, right? Asian yeah. chicks are the best, dude. Is she Asian? No. Yeah, of course. Did you oh. look at the pictures? I mean, I wasn't looking Her at the face Andy much. Wynn, you know? <laughs> that's like the most famous... Isn't that like... the? That's basically like Smith of... Is it Vietnam or? And why did you want to know saying? about? Why did you want to know about the? Well, that's, a, that's actually a serious question I've had or before. Philippines? Like, where's the, where's Nguyen from? Vietnam. Vietnam. That's what it is. Yeah, that's like Smith. Nguyen. Nguyen. For Vietnam is Nguyen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's cool, cool chick. Crazy man. It sucks that she was involved in that. That guy. Why isn't he arrested? Why isn't he in jail? It happened in Texas too. Is he still on the run? Or they got him? No. He's on the run. Yeah, like he skipped bail or something. Oh. Fucking guy. Fucking guy. Know. Yeah. yeah you know, you don't want to go to jail. That's what happens sometimes. Yeah. You ever been to jail? Yeah. For what? Just a couple things. One of them, uh, something I, I pulled over, got pulled over, and I had a warrant out for some unpaid 
ticket or something. So I, so they they arrested me for it. Like, and it was like like fifty dollars. Really? You know that I guess yeah, because you know when I was younger, this is in my twenties. I would you know move a lot. You know I'd be in this apartment and that apartment and this apartment. So I guess they sent the notices to whatever apartment I no longer lived in. So I never got these notices. I never thought about. It. I was too stoned. I didn't care. And then I got pulled over. And every get I'm pulled over right, and the cops behind me. I'm like, okay, well this is fine. You know I'll get a ticket, whatever. And then I see another cop car That's pull up, yeah. and I'm like, well they never call for backup unless someone's getting arrested. Uh. Shit, am I getting arrested? Oh. They're like, yeah, we got this warrant out for you for this outstanding thing. And so they took me in. So that, that cost me, that I was only in jail for like about six hours for that one. Oh. And then I got arrested for smoking weed on the street in New York. And oh. I was in jail for about 48 hours for that one. And that was really Were fucking you scared. Bad. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think I was ever really scared because I never really got past holding. But I was in the tombs and I was scared when because I was this close, man, I was from going to Rikers no. for the remainder of the weekend. Yeah, I managed to like I was cracking up one of the guards and he got me on the last docket of, of Saturday night before they transported us all to Rikers. Oh and I God. got out on the very last boat out of the fucking tombs. Uh, and if I had gone to Rikers, I would have been very scared. Yes, of course. Uh, now, when you go to jail, do they have to do that? Like the full body cavity search like yeah. where they put you completely naked? Yeah. I can't go to jail, dude. That's my worst, <laughs> that's my worst that nightmare. Is, I, I don't feel like they searched me the way they search guys that they probably think might actually be real felons. But yeah, I had to, you know, drop. I don't my even like the airport the when they do that. At the airport, you know? I hate when they on the airport they're like. You, something goes off and then that oh my god yes you've been selected for, let me tell you something and I think it's the mustache because I get selected for, I'm TSA pre-check and I get selected for additional screening every single time they take, the, they take the back of your hand and run it by your penis and I'm just like and the guy always looks shady and I'm like, they don't do that to me I don't know I think uh, you got no, I think they you're got, just they're awfully like, adorable Adam oh, no, man. I, I'm not getting no rear hand action I get rear handed and I'm just nah, like I get on. a little up the thigh play but uh, they never touch uh, anything in the ball. And then I got a boner area. and it's awkward. And exactly. Like, it, it, it's immediately. Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. No, they usually like, you know, swipe my hands. You know, they do the swab test to uh. see if there's any like explosive residue or anything. So I usually get that or an additional pat down. But again, no one's ever touched my dick. I was on a plane. Uh, uh, I feel like I that's a, a, an Adam Hunter exclusive. I was on a plane recently and this little kid was like, he was like kicking the, ta- the, the, the chair in front of him on uh, the plane. Sourced. And this a uh, black woman turns around and goes, you better stop kicking kick my fucking chair now, kid. And then uh, the mom was like, he's only three. And then she's like, I don't give a fuck how old. That's old enough to know you can't kick somebody's chair. Damn straight, like, dude. She's like, let yeah. me find out. I was like, and everyone was just like scared on the plane. Right. But she kind of had a point. Well, but- no, but she also handled it wrong. I mean, the first thing you do, well, first the mom should have stopped the child. Yes. Really. But then you address the mother first yes yes and you you'd make it i mean just you could like a normal person it's like ma'am your child is kicking my chair would you mind stopping the child because i've had this happen too and usually that does the trick yeah i mean she kind of went to defcon 9 real fast real, there, you so know? fast like you don't you don't start with yelling at the kid you start by you know addressing her, the one adult to another i mean the mom's maybe is exhausted and just isn't paying she might be asleep you know moms they sit down they pass the fuck out with these kids so i mean you just gotta tell her so i feel like she jumped a few moments of protocol before you know you don't just go right to laying down the law with the kid i went to, i had an asian guy one time on the plane i was on my phone not paying attention it was time to walk in and he's like walk in moron i go excuse me he goes yeah you know walk i'm like dude you don't talk to people like that he goes, yeah he goes well could be a fucking moron and i go bro Whoa. i go you don't know who you're fucking with he goes yeah tough guy uh and then i'm like all right we'll wait till we get off this plane and then uh, we, then I'm like the whole time I'm like, man, should I should I fight? Do I really want to get to a fight at LAX right now? No, you know what's yeah. the point of this? I the same thing. The guy seemed very confident, so I'm like, maybe he knows some kind of weird karate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this guy. Maybe he's been training more than you have. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I didn't. I was just like, I'm, I'm getting off. But yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, it, yeah. It, some it, people are just looking for trouble. It's and it's never worth it. It's never worth it. Those things. You wind up losing days of your life, plus the, you know the expense, and you got to show up to court. It's a fucking big pain in the ass, man. How's your history, by the way? Um, it's good. I haven't really been in a while because I'm still recovering from my surgery. My surgeon dude said, don't. Do yeah. anything that I can't really do exercise. I mean, I can exercise, but right, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna start going to Allen's Muay Thai. 
class. Oh, he teaches? Yeah, he teaches uh, Muay Thai kickboxing over at Ten Planet Burbank. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like two nights a week. No big deal. And they have a special ed class? Yeah. Yeah, I, I need some extra help. With yeah, you got you, you to train your jiu-jitsu, but you got to no. wear a helmet. Uh, really? <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell if you're a genius or in special ed. I, I can't with Joe. It's hard to tell. No, it's not. <laughs> really? It's pretty obvious which class he's in. He's very bright. <laughs> Happens to be very bright. When it comes to certain things, he's like... Gifted, of course. Special people. That's why they call them special. <laughs> they always have one thing. Did you see Rain Man? Yeah. They always have one thing that they're amazing at. That's Joe. Yeah. Yeah. But everything's going good. That's good. That's good. So, uh, I yeah, that whole uh, UFC too. I can't wait for the Connor uh, Khabib fight. That's what I'm looking forward to. That. I hope it happens. But the good thing about that, if it doesn't happen, they got Tony Ferguson on deck. If someone pulls out, thank of that God spot. he's back, man. Tony yeah. Ferguson against Pettis. Yeah. Ferguson's going to run through Pettis. Totally, yeah. That's not that great of a matchup. <laughs> yeah. I need somebody better. Who is Ferguson's about the fight that he, the last fight that he had to get out of because he got injured? Khabib. Khabib, right. That would have been a hell of a fight. Yeah. That Although was a Pettis did beat Chiesa, and uh, Chiesa's now fighting Carlos Condit, by the way. That's a good fight. Uh, I hope. I think Chiesa wins that fight. I think Chiesa just had some kind of brain lapse or something. Uh, uh, his last, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird, um, but and then what's the names? Uh, they're saying Ally Akita is going to fight Kevin Lee again. Really? Yeah. They already fought. Yeah, they fought. That Who was, won? That was uh, Ky- Akita. That was Kevin's first fight in the UFC. Kevin almost oh, won. Oh, okay. It's pretty close though. Yeah. But I think that I don't. I think Kevin might have this one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he's a different fighter now. He's different a much fighter. better fighter. But Al's good. I mean, Al's really good. I was surprised. I, you know, everyone was talking about how bad Al looked in the Khabib fight or how bad Khabib looked. Al Akita is a great fighter. Yeah, I like him. A great fighter. People just, I don't know. I think, you know, sometimes you put people up on a pedestal too much that if they don't, you know, reinvent the wheel, you're like, oh, they had a terrible. You're like, what? No, it was still a great performance. Yeah. Just by the way, uh, HBO Boxing, no more boxing at HBO. What? They dropped it? They've had it for like since the beginning of HBO. Like yeah. that helped build HBO was their Saturday Night Boxing. Yeah, and it also sucks because I, I like Kellerman. But I think that also shows you where boxing's at, you know, that it's just, you know what I mean? It's really gone downhill, you know, especially they have very few marquee fights. And then when they do, they tend to be very dissatisfying. I mean, they got finally they got a winner out of this last one. uh, Yeah, this last big fight that they had. Triple J. Yeah, exactly. But the one before that, when it was a split decision draw, that all that did was drive people away from boxing. They should have kept Larry Merchant. He was the best. When Larry Merchant would say things like, uh, like when James Tony won, he was like, "Attention, obese people! You now have your own champion." Yeah, like he, and he would say, "Yeah, but Larry Merchant there towards the end didn't he like have a stroke or something like no, him was, and Mayweather? He's like, if he it was, was a little fifty he, years he, ago, he I would have kicked a step pretty hard." He was so funny. He'd be like, 500 pounds in the ring. We have a jabbing contest." And he would just say things that yeah. were just. I, he was he was great. He was the grumpy. You know old who man. cracks me up though is Howard Letterman. Yeah, the fight doctor. Because he, he sounds like he's wearing those googly eye glasses. Like, I got the fights going. 36 to 1. They're, they're giving it away now. They're, I don't know. The thing's up in the air. I mean, how we're like, Always. The, guys. I don't know, Jim. Three rounds and four. One round even. He always has one round even. Yeah. <laughs> like, for some reason, it could be like. To, <laughs> so that guy it just sounds googly eyed. Yeah, know. yeah, he's yeah. He's a goof. He is a goof. Uh, I'm going to try Diego one more time, see if he picks up. Have uh, you guys been following the UFC 230? Debacle. Is that the garden? Well, I guess originally, UFC 230 doesn't really have a main event, right? Yeah. Everybody originally thought that John Jones was going to come back and fight Gustafsson. Yep. But Dana says, no, he's not fighting on 230. Right. So now they're going to have like Yoel versus Gustafsson. But yep. then Yoel said, no, they don't, that's not going to happen. So now it's like up in the air to who's going to headline UFC 230. So mm. what do you think is going to be? Uh, there was a, like, yeah, the Ariel Hawani did something where like everybody's out. Like everybody, they had all these people that can't fight or won't fight. Or, uh-huh. It's probably going to be Wyman Rockhold, right? Really? That, in, in New York. I mean, that seems to be. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, what else are they going to do? Uh, Rose isn't fighting until next year. And, um, and then the other girl, are, the other girls aren't fighting and are already booked to fight. And mm-hmm. It seems like everyone's, everything's shot. Unless they do Brock Cormier, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it's that would be, be pretty awesome. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Say it's going to be somebody ancient. Yeah, I mean that's what they got to do, right? Yeah. But that, but you're right. That's when when you have so many UFCs, that's what happens. That's what happens. You yeah. run through all your big name talent. 
Now you're like, and these guys get injured, and then they can't fight, and then you don't have, and you haven't built any stars up. You didn't take any time, and you know it's too much. They just went through. They've gone through too much. They did too much. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm still gonna watch it. Of course, I'm still gonna watch it. Cool. And McGregor signed for eight more fights in the UFC. Did, did he, he really? You didn't see that? No. He signed an eight fight contract. With book. he be seems it. like the kind of guy who would sign an eight fight contract with having no intention of taking all eight fights. All right. So Diego Sanchez once again. Uh, it did not come through, but whatever. Is there even eight fights possible for McGregor? Like that are going to draw crowds? Well, yeah, because he's going to be in. If he's in thirty different weight classes, I can all see. Time, a, I mean, sure. Yeah, I guess that's true. He Nate fight, there, maybe Ferguson. I think he fights three of those, and he's like, yeah. "I'm retired. I'm done." Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I don't, it depends. Also, at the rate he's spending money. On lawyers and yeah, everything true, else, maybe yeah. he, maybe he, he, but I, he probably made so much money. And, and tight suits. Yeah, I mean, look, McGregor. I can't bet him against him anymore. I, I think he's gonna lose every fight, and then he wins every fight. I mean, I thought the first fight against Nate, I was there. I was at both Nate Diaz fights. Yeah, uh, that was some. Of, that was one of the best fights I've ever seen in my life. That's awesome. Um, but I don't know the the Chad Mendes fight. I was at that fight too. Uh, that was a crazy experience. Uh, was that you? Yes. All right. So I'm, yes. So I'm calling Diego. So Diego will pick up right now. Let's see if we call him right now. Diego Sanchez, one of my favorite fighters. Uh, see what's up. Coming off a big win against Craig White, uh, where he kicks some major ass. Hello. Hello. Is this Diego Sanchez? What up? What's up, man? Diego. You're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. Uh, so excited to have you. One of my favorite fighters. One of my favorite people. I actually, the first time I met you, I was doing a show in Toledo. And I, I, I take four planes to get there. I get to pick up my bags. And the only one there is Diego Sanchez. Uh, it was the weirdest coincidence. It was me and Diego. Random, and, random. Random. random bro. And you, you were, were walking around. You were ro- walking around on a tornado. I remember, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And I was like, I think in the middle of nowhere, Toledo, Ohio. Ohio. What, are, what are the chances? It was. It was yeah. awesome. Brothers, bro- brothers, ever since. Yes. I always, I always followed Adam and the way he has me cracking up. Oh. Can't always comment on, on his jokes, but. But uh, believe me, I'm here on my phone cracking up hard. Thank you, Diego, man. That means a lot to me, man. By the way, congrats on your last fight. That was awesome. Uh, did that fight go exactly how you wanted it to go? Oh, you know, I, I, hold on. Um, I just got a, a juice from the juice shop at the drive thru. Sure. What was the question? Sorry. Your, your last fight against uh, Craig White, did that go exactly how you wanted it to go? You know what, man? Uh, the plan was to go in there and hit him with a bear swipe and watch him fall and finish him with some, some ground and pound. But, you know, the, the, the young guy had a lot of heart coming off a loss. Daniel Magny, he trained really hard. He was fighting for his one shot, his dream in the UFC. He was fighting a legend. And um, he had a lot of heart. I was very surprised. Most of these vulture weights, uh, they can't handle my pace because they cut so much weight that... That halfway through the halfway through the fight, they they fade, and that's when I I get my second win, and I'm just like booyaka, and take over and get the finish. But with this guy, he had a lot of heart. He was tough, and he outsized me by 22 pounds in the cage. So that's the real David and Goliath. You can write a story on that. I'm the real David and Goliath in this in this division. I'm the only man in the UFC that has the balls to put his contract, to put his career on the line to help these fighters stop cutting weight. Like, come on, guys. Like, weight cutting weight was for wrestling. Six minutes on the mat. You're not taking blows to the head. It's completely different. Completely different sport. That's where wrestling origin, I mean, the weight cutting originated from. But now, things have changed. Things have drastically changed. And... And we're, these guys are, I could not believe I was blown away sitting in the back of the locker room watching these guys because now they weigh us before and after the fight. I, I seen this guy that was in the locker room with me, another welterweight, and, and he weighed in on the scale at 194. I was like, what the? Jesus. I was like, seriously? You know, this guy weighs 194 right now? I was like, I was actually blown away. And, and uh, but for me, 
you know, that's the, that's the course I've taken because I fought 145, I fought 155, I did 170, 185, I fought all the weight classes. And for me, the focus, the rest, and just just the mindset of, of going out there and fighting for your dream, you're fighting for your destiny with, 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 with the full potential of your power. You know, you're dehydrated. This guys, these guys are not understanding that they're getting in bathtubs. For the most part, most people do bath, bath bathtub weight cuts. I did it too because you could keep the head cool. It's a pretty good little little invention. But uh, the thing is, this you you're, you're roasting your body. You you you're frying yourself. You're you're basically putting yourself in a lobster pot and pulling all the water out of your body and your brain, Ugh. which you, 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 there's proven results. Even just even just three percent of dehydration affects the body's performance by fifteen percent. These guys aren't. We're. Not, I don't know. If some guys are cheating with IVs, that's a concern of mine. That's that's cheating, big time. Performance enhancing cheating gives you a definitive edge. They say that there's a there's a test that they test our urine for the plastics, but. I don't know. I've never heard of anybody getting popped, and I, uh, I, so I don't really know if that's just a just a bullshit, just a bullshit lie. Because I don't, you know, I don't know. I, they could just lie if they want to. And so I think people are still getting away with it. I think people are still using IVs. Um, how else are they they going in there and performing? You know, with after those massive weight cuts. And so I'm changing the sport. Everything uh, went my way. I got my hand raised. Um, I, I felt pretty dominant in the performance. He hit me with one up kick. He didn't didn't um, like like drop me or or rattle me, but um, I did watch it on the on the video. It looked like it looked like it did, but uh, I just felt I honestly just fell took the hit and fell gracefully into his guard where I was planning to to continue my assault of ground and pound, uh, break his face is my plan. I mean, how much work are you killing yourself to make 145? By the way, that was that was a deathly, deathly thing where I fasted five days before the fight, and it was a long, drawn out seven day weight cut where I had to just keep cutting weight and keep cutting weight. Wow. I actually blew back up to 173, and um, of course, without no with no with no energy, so I had to use. I had to use water, you know, hot water and salt and, and electrolytes to get my weight back on. But the fact of the matter is that I, I blew up, man, and I felt slow. I felt slower on a fight night than I did shadow boxing and sparring and going over my, my combinations. I felt, I felt slower than I did all week, fasting and just deprived. So... You know, I, I I made a decision. I never again will I cut weight like that. It was an achievement, and I I think it it, it uh, makes up for the one time in my career that I missed weight in Japan when I fought Takamura Gomi, which was only by one one point six pounds. But still, I I paid for that with with my twenty percent. And uh, you know, I so, saw you know yeah. But, I've, I've done it all, and now, now I'm fighting at my true weight. I fought with one set weighing 173. I walked in the cage at 173. Now, Two times uh, overweight. Now, recently, Cerrone went on Rogan's podcast and kind of blasted the gym, saying, you know, it's it's a puppy mill, and guys are getting hurt, and let anyone come off the street. If you pay $150, you could train with Holly Holm, uh, and that it, that it was not what it once was. Uh, you responded back. You, you kind of took it personally, and then you actually called out Donald Cerrone. Uh, what exactly? I mean, what what kind of problems did you have with some of the things he was just, uh, he was uh, saying? Straight up, I'm a freaking real ass bottle, bro. I'm a real ass bottle, really? uh, dude. I got my homies backs, bro. You don't think I'm gonna have my freaking wrestling coaches back? He's talking shit, He's pulling up false allegations about a freaking honest, good man. And a hard-working family man, a good person that I love, that I, I have love for my wrestling coach. There were times I was knocked out. He was right there with me, you know? The, you know, I, I, got, I got that guy, I got Chad Smith back to the end. And, and, and Cowboy wanted to make the accusation 
but he was selling steroids at a college. He never even coached. He never even coached at a college, and he never ever sold steroids. And 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 he got the whole story wrong. Put my my friend out there like that. I said, I said f that. I ain't got I ain't got to stop for that shit. And you know what? I was a little emotional, and I had to to keep my focus on Craig White. But I was just like, you know what? I am absolutely fine not being friends with this guy for the rest of my life because that's how down I am for my homies. And so, you know, screw this guy, man. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't care. You don't talk trouble about good people like that. Mike Winkle John is a legend of the game. You don't talk shit about Winkle John either. You don't talk shit about these people. They have deserved their honor and valor with the, their, who they are. And if you don't know them and you have some other guy in your ear telling you to, you know, putting in these messages in your head, you, you better you better figure out if there's the truth or not before you freaking go on Joe Rogan and, and start calling people out and start talking shit. Like he wanted he, he showed respect for me, but I but I don't I, but all I gotta say is this Cowboy was never really ever at the gym or part of the gym. He did his own thing out in Edgewood. He'd come in to get rounds, and when he needed rounds, get cage work, when he needed cage work, and basically used the used our system to help his system. You, he'd bring his guys that he'd have staying out there at the ranch down to get rounds with us because it helped his guys out. It helped his program out. And uh, and then he would also uh, recruiting fighters from from our, from our facility to go to, to, to the BMF ranch. And so, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I, that, it ain't my, that ain't my business because I don't own the gym. But am I a team captain? Am I, I'm one, am I the pioneer or the originator, the very first fighter in the UFC out of Burke, out of 505 Albuquerque, the city that I was born and raised, the real freaking state champion of Albuquerque? Shit. Try to come and, come and think you're the man. Like, you know, I, I might have had some falls in the cage, but I'm back on my feet. I get back up, and I dust my shoulders off, and, and I'm headed in the direction that I needed to go. In. And so for him to, you know, say, yeah, I left for, I left for two years, yeah, I left, and I had a, a, a private conversation with, with Greg Jackson, and we were able to say, you know what, I love you at the end of it, and, um, and, and, and he told me this is always your house. I came back. Right. You know what? That doesn't mean that I was a traitor to the gym. I decided to leave. I, there's guys who have put in less time that that are on the wall of fame at Jackson's, and and they never even lived in Albuquerque. So so you don't 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 come at me with that bull crap, bro. Like straight up, don't come at me with that bull crap. Like I'm I, I was living my life, and, and I'm, I'm happy I did. Now, now, does Mike Winklejohn have the same system though for everybody, where he's he's not varying it up, and and do, do, and also, do you think that maybe they had an obligation to work with Cowboy and not Mike Perry for this fight because because they're you know Cowboy is their guy? Absolutely not, because Cowboy was not Winklejohn's guy. Cowboy's always hired his own striking coaches, and he's used Greg as his head coach. Because Greg's a genius in the corner, and he's the best. And and the thing about it was that Cowboy wasn't like me. I got I, I got a nineteen thousand dollar check and took it to the gym last week. I paid my ten percent, win or lose. And Cowboy Cowboy wasn't all Cowboy was just doing was just giving Greg money under the table. So Wink was doing Greg a favor, letting Cowboy come to the gym without paying. And then he has a new fighter. That is is up and coming under his under him that he trains that he you know Perry has a, another striking coach in Frank Lester too but but he's all he's a Jackson Wink guy he you know, he's he's part of the team and he's paying the gym so it makes no sense yeah loyalty is loyalty but you know what the loyalty had already been crossed a long ago with Cowboy. Him and him and Wink never had no loyalty. He never had no loyalty for Wink. You know, he never, ever. He, the most part, he, he, Wink, Wink cornered him a couple fights, two fights, I think, and he won those fights. But he, Cowboy didn't like that Winkle John was instructing him to to not stand tall and 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 get backed up. 
like he didn't like the, the way Rico John was coaching him, so he decided to have another coach, and so it all got blown out of proportion. Cowboy, uh, have a nice life. Uh, God bless you. Um, hope you hope you do well. Um, you know, if, if 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 the stars align and we have to fight, then right on. Let's do it. We're warriors. We're fighters. I ain't scared. I, I he knows I'm not scared. I'm from the street, so you know, like I'm a. I'm, I'm 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 tapping back into who I really am. How, I'm how, a freaking warrior. I'm a savage. I'm a killer. I'm not going in there with the intent to to like I used to to do a martial arts and fight friends and shake hands. You know, you will not see Diego Sanchez shaking another opponent's hand. Maybe after the fight, but before the fight, I will never shake another opponent's hand. I don't care. That's me. And if whether people don't like it and they call me respectful, disrespectful. They call me disrespectful and they don't like me because I don't shake hands and I don't make friends before fights. I don't care because that 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 don't work for me. It don't work for me and I don't fight better being friends. So you know what? Maybe like the Diaz brothers and stuff. Like then well, it works for them too. Well, that's how Diego, who Diego's always been. And after being knocked out in my career, I realized that these men are going out there trying to knock my brain out, give me brain damage. You know, mess my brain up. Give me a TBI, a, tra- a traumatic brain injury. No. Think I'm going to be friends with that fool? Hell no. Right. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to put you on the mat and I'm going to deliver an elbow that breaks your orbital bone. I'm coming for your, if, I, if, if I'm going for an arm, a leg, I'm going for that shit for the finish. I'm going to go to break it. You better tap quick. Because they're going to break my brain. They're trying to break my brain. And so now I am coming back with the mental intent in my mind's eye that I am coming to crush bones, break faces, and really hurt these people. No, I'm not their friend. So, no, I'm fine with not being Cowboys friend. If we have to fight, I'm going to come out there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come out with, their, with, with, with a nasty, mean, terrible violent intent i'm not doing a kickboxing karate match i'm not doing a boxing match i'm not doing a wrestling match i'm not doing a grappling match i'm doing all-out war you know and 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 the matt brown fight taught me that too i was all friendly with him respect all respect no guy came and hit me in the back of the head because i was the nicer guy nicer guys always finish out last and, and 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 I'm not trying to be Mr. Nice Guy anymore. I'm the nightmare. That's it. Nightmare's back. And, and nightmare's fueled, fired, ready for war. Touch uh, on Shelby today. I'm going through some personal issues right now. Uh, uh, some another battle I got to get to. But I'm 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 I'll be back in the cage soon. Probably early 2019. Right off the bat, I'm gonna kick the year off. Kick the year off fast with with the big fight. And um, train through, train through, uh, train through the holidays, and um, get something big going. Now, how did you do I'm, against? I'm, how did you do against Cowboy? You, now, in like sparring, how did you, how did you match up against Cowboy? Um, you know what, me and Cowboy sparring match up. Yeah, we we, we match up great. Um, I've 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 tapped him out many times. He's dropped me with a body kick before. You know, we we've we've had some more rounds, but. Those are just come and go, you know. Come and go our chances of it. If he was there at the gym, I had to me and the cowboy around the cowboy. Yeah, I want to want to work with cowboy. Cowboy has a lot of uh, a lot of awesome tools in his toolbox. I would love to learn from him. I I always would like to work with him. So even if I was on stage or or, or whatever, because usually he only came in during his training camp. But anytime I got a chance to train with him, I'll train with him. I've tapped him before. He's tapped me before. I've, I, you know, we, we, we've done kickboxing. We've done MMA. It's never really, really gone down, you know. But uh, if it goes down in the cage, believe me, I'm ready, I, I'm ready to, to, to blast out the gates and freaking go to war. How does that, uh, now, huh? is, uh, is John Jones back in the gym? I haven't seen him yet. I know um, I haven't really been in the in the gym for classes this week. I've kind of been just working on my anti-aging protocol. And, um, you know, I have a pretty good tough war. And so after my fights, I go straight into my anti-aging protocol, yoga, ice baths, infrared saunas, 
breathing techniques and nutrition. And so that's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of um, just being the healthiest that I can be mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get something going soon. I know the ball is rolling and I want to keep the ball rolling. By the way, who do you think wins, Khabib or Connor? I'm taking Connor in this fight. Um, taking Connor, I, 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 I like Khabib better. Khabib is my favorite, probably one, my second, one of my top two favorite fighters. But I feel that he's lacked in the progression of his footwork, something that I know being a wrestler who didn't have the fastest feet. You know, I, I would come forward and, you know, get the guys down and do exactly what could be done most of the, for the most part of my life. It wasn't until I dropped down to 145, 155, and, and 145 especially, you know, working with the fast little, little lightning fast feet of, of the lighter, lighter, lighter weights and training with them and, and putting, and after being out quick by Miles Dury, um, and I, I, I realized, you know, okay, I don't ever want that to happen again, so I need to go train like a real true athlete, like a football player, like a basketball player, like a track and field athlete, and do cone drills and do do, do ladder drills. And I, I committed myself to this for three years religiously every day. And um, to the point where now, now my feet are, are very fast for the 170-pound division. Um, and... I feel that, that Habib has not had the adversity to go through that part of his career yet. And um, he's going to find out how light Connor is on his feet. Connor's probably the lightest on his feet. I would attribute that probably from his young boxing career, probably doing a lot of jumping rope. That's how boxers get so light on their feet. He, um, you know, he also incorporated a lot of movement training on, the, on his rise um, with Eagle Portel and, and just himself really uh being a mobile athlete a mobile athlete with uh, with with speed and and, li- and being quick and light on his feet in the aldo fight i seen him how light he is on his feet he's got heart he's got, connor's got heart and um he's got conditioning and i feel that if anything this is my prediction is that 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 habib is going to come out strong and yes his wrestling will prevail I think he's going to do some damage, but I feel that Connor's going to be able to to negate most of most of the attack, and that that Connor's going to be able to escape, get back to his feet. Round one, two, or three. Uh, round round two or three, he's going to um, find his rhythm on his feet, be lighter than Khabib, and feel Khabib coming in. I, f- I feel I feel K- Khabib comes in, and you can see him coming in. So. You know that you know he mixes up his striking better in the Al fight, but you still can see him coming in, and so I think Connor's going to be able to see that, capitalize on that, and 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 even if Connor just uses his jab and his right uppercut for the most part of the fight, I I feel he's going to be looking for his big left hand, and um, it's going to be a I think he drops a drops Khabib, drops Khabib. I'm predicting in the third. And uh, finishes with a uh, with a fast onslaught of, of ground and pound. I, I kinda, and that's yeah. how I see the fight going. Now you recently went to Russia for a grappling tournament. What was that like? I I, I recently what? Did you didn't you go to Russia recently for a grappling tournament? Did I get a wrestle a grappling? No, Russia. Did a, Russia. Didn't you go to Russia for some kind of grappling tournament? Yes, yes, yes. I went to Russia. I went to Russia for ACB Jiu Jitsu, and um, I competed out there. It was awesome. And um, I hope to I hope to continue my professional grappling career. And uh, you know, Russia's Russia's awesome. I love Russia. They love me. And uh, I'm going back to Russia. I love you, Russia. Well, listen, Diego. It was an honor to have you on the show, man. I know you're really busy, and I just want to say thank you. I'm a fan for life, dude. I, you're one of those inspiring people. Hey, I know. I'm, I'm doing we brothers, bro. You're more than a fan. You brothers. We're brothers. You know, homie, yes. Whenever, I, whenever. Now, now that I'm, I'm going to be out there soon to California, I'm going to come visit you. Yes. And uh, we're going to have a good time. You're going to have to crack me up. One hundred percent. Well, I don't know. I've never, I've never got to, I've never got to hang out with, with a comedian. Yeah, when he's not on his comedian, you know, not up on stage. So, so we we'll see, man. I want to hang out with you. I want to kick it, and uh, we'll meet up. We're gonna meet up. What, what part are you? What part are you? Uh, are you living now? Uh, I'm in. I'm in Hollywood. 
I'm right in Hollywood. Hollywood oh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. As soon as you come, you let me know. I'll pick Hollywood it. is your last chance. We'll have, come visit. I we'll promise. Have it. And, hey, I, I give you my word, bro. I'm coming to visit, man. So, oh. so remember, I told you, and I'm going to come follow through. I love it. Well, thank you, Diego. And have a good rest of the week, brother. Hey, right on. And you have a blessed weekend, too. Take care. Later, bro. All right, that was Diego Sanchez. I like his breakdown of Khabib versus Connor. Yeah, I think he's absolutely right. You think so? Unfortunately, yeah. Dang, I know, I'm sort of, I'm starting to lean towards Connor winning that fight now. Uh, it's rough. But I don't know. Yeah, yes. Uh, so, what do you got coming up? Uh, go follow me on Twitter, Instagram. It's all the same. It's uh, the Ween Dog at the Ween Dog. W e e n d a w g, and that's that. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm at Laugh Lines Comedy Club tomorrow on Saturday in Vancouver. Uh, then the following week, I'm in Iowa, in Des Moines, Iowa, at the Funny Bone Comedy Club in Des Moines. And the following week after that, I'm in Kansas City, St. Louis, at, uh, me and Jeremy Pivot are on tour together, uh, as well as Cedar Rapids, uh, Penguins. It's all on adamhunter.com, adamhunter.com. Uh, New Year's Eve that whole week, uh, the week before, actually, before the UFC event, I'll be in Las Vegas uh, at the, um, at the, the uh, Stratosphere. So uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you guys shop on Amazon.com, go to AdamHunter.com first, then buy whatever you have off Amazon. Please do that. So uh, thank you, guys, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Welcome Trap, Sonson. 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 Trap, Tuni sons to hook them, don't put land. Tather stolt and don't put a bottle.